Chapter 1721 Louis tore the letter. A group of photos of Jessie staying with the crew had been revealed to the netizens on social media. She was bathing under the sun with her long hair down, and she looked otherworldly. Her fans immediately complimented her looks and compared her to a goddess. Besides, the set of photos was even getting viral among non-fans. Furthermore, the pictures were now trending on Twitter. Even without proper publicity about her personality, Jessie emitted warmth through the pictures. She also received good news from Queenie recently. As August was fast approaching, Queenie's wedding was also around the corner. Jessie was looking forward to the invitation to Queenie's wedding. She returned to her room after a long day, and Julian reached out a hand to caress her head. Get some rest. Don't. Stay up late. I won't, she promised. He recalled Louis showing up at the set again, but he didn't bother to seek his brother out. Julian didn't want to become the third wheel between Louis and Eva since Louis had been pouring his attention on her the whole time. Lately, after all, Louis didn't visit the set for Julian. Even though he was Louis's brother, Julian himself was a nobody compared to Eva. Meanwhile, in a presidential suite, Louis and Eva shared an intimate night. In the morning, the lights in the room shone on her ivory skin. Hickeys could be seen all over her shoulders, which were made by Louis last night. She was still asleep while the man had already gotten up from bed. He walked out of the bedroom and sat on the sofa. When his gaze landed on the contract termination letter on the coffee table, he grabbed it and tore the contract apart the next second. He did it without hesitation because he regretted his choices. Louis would never allow Eva to leave him as he was determined to be responsible for her. Little did Eva know, her companionship for Louis last night would end up becoming nothing. After that, he slid back into the bed and embraced her in his arms with satisfaction before he fell into slumber. It was noon when Eva woke up, and the sun hung in the middle of the sky. At first, she noticed the strong arm she slept on last night, and she then turned to the side involuntarily. She was met by Louis's handsome face, which was bathing under the sunlight. When she saw his face, she couldn't help but replay their intimacy last night in her mind. With a flushed face, she fluttered her eyes shut as she suppressed the thoughts. Sighing in resignation, Eva decided to leave before he woke up. She slid down the bed in light movements and stood on the ground like a cat without making any noise. She put on her shirt while heading for the sofa outside, and found her phone as expected. Then, she steered her gaze to the spot where she put the letter last night, thinking to take it along. However, she didn't find it there. Where's the contract? I put it over there last night. Eva immediately searched for the document on the sofa. However, she suddenly noticed scraps of paper in the bin. She didn't think twice before she walked over and reached out for them. It was exactly the termination letter she was looking for, but it was voided since someone tore them apart. Eva's chest heaved in anger. At the same time, Louis's low voice grabbed her attention from behind. I'm not letting you go. She turned to the man who was leaning against the door frame and glared at him. Louis Gilmore, H. How can you not keep your word? You're right, but I don't mind becoming a jerk who doesn't keep his promise if it means you'll stay. He didn't back down from the confrontation as his eyes shone with determination. Don't make me hate you. Eva was furious at his behavior. After all, she sacrificed her virginity to earn her freedom. She couldn't possibly stay calm after learning that he broke his promise. Even if you hate me, I won't let you go. He walked over to her and pulled her into his embrace. After last night, I've decided that you're important to me, and I'll do anything for you. You, his sincere words put Eva's head in a mess. After all, she also tasted pleasure like never before with him. Last night, stay with me. I want you to become Mrs. Gilmore, the wife of the president of Stardom Entertainment. Will you accept that? Louis was promising her the titles. He felt like it was time for him to settle down with the woman he loved. Eva sighed at that. It was the most important decision she was about to make in her life, but she had no idea whether to accept or decline it. Ever since she encountered many kinds of people in showbiz, she became pessimistic about true love and no longer 
looked forward to it. After all, there were many examples of true lovers ending up in a mess and breaking up with each other. After a moment of pondering, she rejected him. I don't want the title of Mrs. Gilmore. You can give it to somebody else. But I want nobody but you to own the title. Louis rested his chin on her shoulder as he murmured, You're the one I want. I'm exhausted. I'm going back to my room. You can pass me the new termination letter. With that, Eva struggled out of his embrace and strode for the door. Chapter 1722 Eva's scandal became the headline. Eva left without turning her head. At that point, Louis was in turmoil and he started to panic deep down. At that moment, his phone rang and steered his attention away. Grabbing his phone, he looked at the caller ID for a moment before answering it. Hello. Hi, Louis. How have you been lately? It's been a while since I last saw you. Mr. Constantine. I'll cut to the chase. I want to talk about the alliance marriage between our families. Are you free to talk about it? Sometime, Mr. Constantine, I don't think I can marry your daughter without any emotional foundation. Louis, my daughter admires you. Back then, I lent your parents 100 million in return for the marriage. Between you and my daughter, even though your parents have passed away, we should still continue with the marriage. Today, the Gilmore family was the leading company in the industry with an immeasurable net worth, while the Constantine family had gradually declined over the years. Thus, the Constantine family would grasp the opportunity to unite two families. They would never let their chance to climb the social ladder slip away from them. Mr. Constantine, we'll discuss it later. Sure. Why don't you come over so we can meet up? Your father was a man who kept his promises, so surely. You've inherited the trait from him. At that, Louis kept his composure as he answered, All right. I'll arrange the meeting. Meanwhile, Eva was resting in her room but was surprised to see the hotel staff bringing her breakfast. It seemed that Louis was worried about her and had called room service for her. Then, she remembered spending the last night with him, and she knew she needed contraceptive pills. As she didn't want her assistant to help her deliver the pills, she decided to buy them by herself. She went downstairs after disguising herself for the pharmacy next to the hotel. She didn't notice the presence of the paparazzi who were following her when she walked into the pharmacy. Therefore, not only was the sight of her picking up the pills captured by the paparazzi but the packaging of the pills she picked up was also captured by the camera. The realization of the top celebrity from Stardom Entertainment buying contraceptive pills in the early morning was setting the paparazzi a buzz for witnessing the breaking news. On the other hand, Eva strode away from the pharmacy and returned to the hotel without slowing down, while the paparazzi reached out to the mass media and sold them the news. The media was always fishing for her scandal because her name alone would bring them a high volume of data. Traffic. In less than half an hour, her scandal was already making the headlines. All the netizens learned that she spent her time with a man last night. They were more curious about the man's identity because he didn't even use protection. Countless male fans of Eva were envious of the man who slept with her. Meanwhile, on set, Jesse took the time to finish shooting a scene in the early morning. After that, she headed for the empty seat next to Lexi for a rest. Lexi was whispering to another girl on the side the whole time, which piqued Jesse's curiosity. What are you talking about? Jesse, do you know who the man who stayed the night with Eva was? Lexi was itching to learn the full story from her. Jesse was confused to hear that. What man? Lexi didn't waste any time showing her the headline. Look at this. Eva bought the pills by herself this morning. I pity her. Jesse took her time to read the article before the corner of her lips turned into a knowing smile. Who else could it be other than Louis? Julian had told Jesse about Louis visiting the set when the two were in the car last night. It seems like Julian can expect a sister-in-law soon. Hum, I don't know anything about that. Jesse shook her head. She wasn't in the position to spread baseless rumors. Eva herself was the only person who had a say in this matter. Did Eva come to the set today? Nope. She's taking a day off, Lexi answered. Jesse was glad to hear that. 
It seems like Eva has moved on and is now seeing President Gilmore. Meanwhile, in the hotel, Eva finally saw the news and she couldn't sit still. She saw herself as a usually calm woman. But the news was quite disturbing. What bad timing. Why does it have to be when I bought the pills? At that moment, someone rang the doorbell of her room. Looking through the peephole, she found that it was Louis, who was staying next door. She pulled the door open for him but couldn't help it when the blood rushed to her face. Are you here to offer me? The New Termination Letter Chapter 1723 Announcing His True Identity to the Public Why didn't you ask me to buy the pills? Louis sighed upon seeing her. He felt bad to see her being followed by the paparazzi and became the headline of the day. Eva averted her gaze. It's none of your business. Then, as she remembered something, she shifted her attention back to him. It's been trending on Twitter for a few hours. What is the public relations department doing? When are they going to deal with it? A dark smile remained on the corner of his lips. Their performance has been poor lately. Truth be told, it had nothing to do with the public relations department, even less that they were doing their job poorly. Instead, Louis was the one who ordered the department to let the news stay trending. After all, stardom. Entertainment would always deal with their artist scandals the first time. Moreover, Eva was the top celebrity in the company. However, the news of Eva buying the pills remained in the headlines until now. Even her fans couldn't help but wonder about the identity of the man staying with her last night. She was always an abstained woman and was considered the most flawless celebrity in their circle. But now, the fact she had to buy the birth control pills was telling the public that she was seeing a guy at the moment, yet his identity remained a mystery. Don't be mad. Let's go downstairs and grab something to eat, Louis suggested. His words indeed reminded Eva that she was bored alone in the room. Nodding, she left her room and followed him. Downstairs. There was a well-known cafe downstairs, and they were having tea there. She picked a seat next to the window, while he took a seat opposite her and used his phone to take a picture of her. Leaning against the window, he uploaded the picture to his social media account with captions before. Screenshotting it and sending it to the public relations department. At last, he ordered, make it a push message to the public. Eva had no idea of him setting her up nor him announcing that he stayed with her last night to the public himself. Don't ever eat the pills in the future. It's harmful to your health. That was careless of me last night. Louis muttered guiltily. His words left Eva flushing to the tip of her ears. She tightened her grasp around her cup of tea. Let's not talk about what happened last night. Why did I make you uncomfortable? He was eager to know her feelings. Blushing as red as a tomato, she shot daggers at him as she mumbled, stop it. A low chuckle escaped Louis when he heard that. I am very satisfied with last night. Eva turned away from his intense gaze. The memory of the moment they shared last night emerged in her mind. Truth be told, she thought it would be nice to have him as a lover. Louis was the dream guy of every woman. He was handsome, fit, wealthy, and competent, which was a perfect combination. The pair enjoyed the tea for almost 20 minutes, and Eva had no idea that she had unintentionally set the netizens abuzz. The identity of the mysterious man last night was finally revealed. He wasn't any of the male artists who had collaborated with Eva before as her fans expected, but Louis Gilmore, the president of Stardom Entertainment himself. The picture of them having afternoon tea together was hard evidence that they spent last night together. Therefore, thousands of wishes flooded the comment section. All of her fans were wishing them a happy life. Besides, the fans were hoping that they could have a baby soon. Louis was browsing through the wishes and comments from Eva's fans under a short video. Taking the countless blessings in, the corner of his lips curled into a satisfied smile. She narrowed her eyes when she saw that. What are you smiling about? Eva, will you be my girlfriend? He confessed his feelings with full affection. She lowered her gaze. Don't ever think I'll become your girlfriend just because you slept with me. You still owe me. A termination contract. I want to be responsible to you for the rest of your life. Once you become the president's wife, you can terminate. The contract however you want. 
Louis chuckled deeply, but Eva dismissed his suggestion. I'm not interested in becoming your wife. It will never be anyone else. Don't tell me you want me to choose someone else. He slightly raised his brows to tease her while he stared at her with an unfathomable gaze. She shied away from his gaze. After last night, she was surprised to see many things spinning out of her control. One of them included him occupying a significant spot in her heart. At that moment, her phone rang. Seeing that her manager was calling, she put it next to her ear and answered. Adele, what is it? Chapter 1724 Declaring Their Relationship Why didn't you tell me about something so important, Eva? I had to learn about it from the internet. You are so unkind. What are you talking about? Eva was perplexed. I'm talking about your relationship with President Gilmore. Looks like I have to prepare a lavish gift for your wedding now. When Eva heard that, she quickly looked at the man in front of her. Standing up, she said quietly, nothing is going on between the both of us, Adele. Adele, however, sneered at that. The fact that you both slept together last night has gone viral on the internet. You can't keep it a secret from me. Eva was shaken by this. What? Who said I slept with him? Didn't you buy the pills this morning because you slept with him the night before? I, President Gilmore paid a visit to your set. Who else can you be with besides him? He even filmed you having afternoon tea with him. You can't deny it any longer. What good taste you have. President Gilmore is a good catch. Adele complimented. Annoyance flashed across Eva's eyes when she heard that. So, this man deliberately asked me for afternoon tea to publicize our relationship. I underestimated him. Looks like it's no surprise that his public relations department is not doing anything to my rumor. He is most likely the one who instructed them not to. With this in mind, Eva hung up the call with Adele and walked over to the table where the man was sitting. Then, with her gaze fixed on him, she asked, Did you declare our relationship on the internet? I have to let your supporters know the man last night was me, so they don't have to waste their time guessing who that man was, Louis replied as if he was truly concerned for Eva's supporters. You, you did it on purpose. Eva scolded him gently. I will do anything for you, Louis responded in a serious tone. That made Eva's heart skip a beat as she began to wonder whether she was worthy of his love. Later in the afternoon, Jessie finally went to the same set as Julian. After applying her makeup, she sat by the corner and watched Julian's outstanding performance. His fighting moves were all clean and tidy, and the director approved them all on the first take. Admiration filled her eyes as she watched Julian. Her feelings for him seemed to develop so naturally. When Julian finished his scene and was about to rest, he took a glass of water and walked over to Jesse. After he took his sip, Jesse extended her hand to him. I'd like to drink as well. Julian naturally handed her the glass, and she, too, drank it in front of everyone. They then walked over to the chairs nearby to rest while the crew prepared the props. At this moment, Jesse couldn't help but curiously inquire, have you read about Eva's news? What news? Julian narrowed his eyes and asked. Jesse, however, was a little embarrassed to say it. Hence, she scrolled through her phone to look for Eva's news. Before handing her phone to Julian. This. Julian took her phone and read the news, a smile spreading across his face. My brother appears to have found me. A sister-in-law. Jesse was surprised to hear that. How did you know the man is your brother? I haven't shown you your brother's news yet. Isn't that obvious enough? Julian was aware of what was going on. Louis had been eyeing Eva for a long time. And Eva had no other friends of the opposite gender around her as well. Furthermore, Louis came to get her last night. Jesse then quickly showed Julian another piece of information. Louis posted this photo of Eva having afternoon tea. That clearly shows that the man with Eva was him. As Julian read the news, he found Louis hilarious. No matter how mature Louis normally was, he was still a childish guy when it came to courting a woman. To Julian, Louis did make a clever move by publicly declaring his relationship with Eva on the internet, so that everyone was aware of it. But it remained unknown as to whether Eva would approve of him doing so. Shall we treat them to dinner tonight? 
Julian asked Jessie. The dinner didn't matter to her, all she heard and remembered was Julian using the word, we. Is that to say we're a couple as well? Jessie couldn't help but feel joyous deep down. Chapter 1725 She cried. At this point, one of the crew members called out, Jessie, it's your turn. Jessie quickly stood up and went to film. Her scene, Julian, too, stood up with her. Though he did not have any scenes with her yet, he wanted to watch all of her scenes. The current scene Jessie was filming was with Fabian. Furthermore, it was a scene in which Jessie had to hug Fabian from behind and confess her love to him. Fabian had previously conversed and joked with Jessie, but he did not dare to do so now. However, the current scene was not something they could avoid. Following the director, Vincent's, instruction, Jessie dashed to Fabian and hugged his waist as she spoke her lines. Don't leave me. I've loved you since the first time I met you. I want to be by your side forever, even if only as a servant to you. Cut. Vincent stopped her at this moment. Jessie, you need to be more emotional. Your acting is lacking. Something. Jessie breathed deeply and took a few steps backward to where she had been standing earlier. One of the crew. Members beside her began explaining the story to her while she tried hard to prepare the necessary emotion. If you can't cry, think of something that makes you sad, Jessie. She blinked her eyes in response. There hasn't been anything that has made me sad recently. As a result, she failed her next attempt again. The man standing by the side pursed his lips as he watched her. Hugging Fabian repeatedly, he then walked to Vincent. Just as Vincent was about to instruct Jessie to try a few more times, he saw the man. Standing next to him and almost jumped in shock. Why can't all of the previous attempts be used? Julian inquired with his arms crossed as if interrogating Vincent. Meanwhile, Vincent was immediately under pressure. Who allowed this guy to watch our filming? As such, he quickly waved his hand and said, we probably only need one more try. Jessie, too, saw what Julian did and sighed. She wished she could do the scene in one take as well, but she couldn't. Get the right emotion out of herself. Her confession, in particular, was unnatural. She tried once again, but she still couldn't perform up to Vincent's expectations. Looking at the man beside him who was becoming increasingly glum, Vincent had a brilliant idea. Why don't you? Try filling in for Fabian, young master Julian. Let Jesse hug you and try once more. Julian raised his brows in response to such a suggestion. Let's do it. With that, Fabian immediately removed his coat and handed it to Julian, and the crew then put it on the ladder. As the current scene's focus was solely on Jesse, Julian would not be filmed and could completely play along for the entire scene. Jesse, on the other hand, was embarrassed by such a change in the cast as she had to hug Julian and confess to him with her eyes filled with admiration. Let's try again, Jesse, Vincent instructed. Jessie quickly prepared herself and dashed to hug Julian's waist. Indeed, the moment she hugged him was when she was overwhelmed with emotion. She was considering the possibility that the man whom she was hugging would fall in love with another woman. Her eyes welled up with tears as she reflected on this thought. This is the right feeling, Jessie, Vincent said as he looked through the camera at her. Keep it up and start your lines. Jessie then recited her lines completely, and she even sobbed at times. This was exactly what Vincent wanted. Great. We're done with this scene now. Before Jessie could stop her tears, Julian turned around to look at her. She wiped her tears away in a fluster. Embarrassed by her inability to control her emotions. What sad thoughts did you have? Julian went closer to her and inquired. Jessie, however, was too embarrassed to tell him what she thought. Hence, she replied patronizingly, it's just a small unpleasant thing. Julian got more curious after hearing her words. What is the unpleasant thing? Seeing that he persisted, she asked solemnly, do you really want to know? Yes. Julian knew she must be genuinely upset for her tears to fall when she thought about the situation. And so, Jessie murmured, come closer, then. Chapter 1726 Walking into his trap Julian quickly lowered his body and moved his ear closer to her lips. With that, Jessie decided to be honest with him. 
I was considering what I should do if you unexpectedly fall in love with someone else, she explained. That made Julian's heart ache a little. Ignoring the fact that there were crew members nearby, he drew her into his embrace and exclaimed, What nonsense are you thinking of? Jesse quickly pushed him away with her small strength while terrifyingly signaling to him that there were crew members nearby. Julian found her amusing while watching her cautious behavior, but at the same time, he respected her as well. This is her first film. I'd better let her finish her work with peace of mind. Meanwhile, back at the hotel, Eva was irritated by what had happened on the internet. Her manager had taken a flight and rushed over as this matter had severe ramifications. After much deliberation, Eva reasoned that she should obtain the termination contract before considering anything else. After all, she couldn't have allowed herself to sleep with the man for nothing. Thus, she stood up and exited her room before going to the room next door and ringing the doorbell. Within seconds, the man inside the room answered the door. When the door was opened, she saw him naked, with only a bath towel wrapped around his lower body. His perfect figure was exposed right in front of her eyes. You, her cheeks flushed as she gazed at his toned abs before she turned away in embarrassment. Put on your clothes. I'd like to speak with you about something. Come in first. Julian chuckled deeply. And so, Eva entered the room. However, the man behind her wrapped his arms around her waist before she could take more than two steps. His manly breath, combined with a faint scent of body shampoo, made her nervous as she felt a current rush through her body. You, let me go. Eva struggled to free herself from his grip. Didn't you have a good time last night? The man asked, his voice hoarse. However, she purposefully avoided discussing what happened last night as she stated, I'm here for the contract. Termination. Eva, the man began calling her lovingly, his voice enticing. Eva wanted to push his hand away, but her strength prevented her from doing so. She could only turn around to face him, but once she did, she was met with his deep, fiery gaze. Seeing that, she knew that things were about to become dangerous. She was now kicking herself for walking into his room voluntarily. I, forget it, I'll go back now. Eva spoke as she struggled to break free from his embrace. But to the man, she was like an innocent rabbit walking right into his trap. He would not allow her to leave. He carried her in his arms the next second, prompting her to mutter angrily, Leave me alone, Louis. I can't, and I don't want to. With that, Louis immediately carried her to his bedroom. Eva wished she hadn't come, but it was too late. She gradually lost herself in the man's affection, as he reawakened. Her previously buried love and obsession for him. She could no longer avoid her own feelings after being confronted with his intense love. Later in the evening, Eva sat on the sofa after taking a bath. Should I take the pills? She asked herself. I don't think it's necessary, the man standing behind her replied. Eva raised her head and gave him a stern look. How dare he respond to me? It's all because of him that I'm worried about this. Louis immediately understood how those men who were tightly controlled by their wives felt. He quickly pursed his lips and remained silent. Eva, however, felt uneasy. What if I become pregnant? What am I going to do then? Oh God, please don't let that happen. At this moment, Louis's phone rang. He took a look at the screen before answering it. Hello, Julian, dinner. Tonight. Sure, I'll be there with Eva. After he hung up the phone, Louis looked at the woman sitting on the sofa and said, My brother invited us for dinner tonight. Jesse will be there too. Eva nodded in response. I'll take a bath in my room, she said as she stood up. Take your bath here. I'll help you, Louis said gently. Eva, of course, turned it down. She had lost all trust in him. At 6.30 p.m., Louis and Eva were the first to enter the restaurant's private room. Not long after that, a lovely couple entered. Chapter 17 27 Sisters-in-Law Julian and Jesse had arrived. They both came straight from the set to the restaurant, and they looked a little tired. Hello, President Gilmore and Eva. Jesse greeted. Eva was surprised as she watched the duo enter the room together, as they both looked and behaved like a couple. Louis was astute enough to notice that as well. 
Of course, he was aware that Jesse was special to his brother. You don't have to address me as President Gilmore, Jesse. Just call me Louis, as Julian does, he said. How can I do that? That took Jesse aback for a brief moment. She then quickly responded, I shouldn't do that. You are my superior, and I must respect you. All right, then. Louis did not pursue the matter further. Eva quickly drew Jesse to the seat beside her and inquired about her earlier filming. Meanwhile, the brothers had their eyes fixed on Eva and Jesse while the women were chatting, as they were the main protagonists now. Eva, I heard you only have slightly more than a dozen scenes left for you to wrap your part. Is that correct? Jesse asked. Eva replied with a nod. Yes, my filming will be completed in three or four days. Then you'll be leaving, won't you? I'll miss you though, Jessie took Eva's hand in hers as she spoke. It's all right. After you return to Averna, we can go out for meals or go shopping. Eva had already taken Jessie as a friend. Suddenly, Julian interrupted and asked curiously, is the news on the internet true? Are you two seeing each other? Of course, that is true, Louis answered. Eva's face flushed as soon as she heard that. Don't listen to him, she told Julian while sternly looking at Louis. I can't promise anything else, Eva, but I can assure you that Louis's feelings for you are genuine and sincere. Julian decided to assist Louis to push his brother further along in his relationship. Eva's eyes flickered when she heard that. She was aware of Louis's feelings for her, but she had no plans to get married right now. After all, marriage was a big decision for a woman, and she couldn't make it after only one night of sleep. Eva, I can see that President Gilmore treats you well, Jesse chimed in. However, Eva began teasing Jesse instead. I can see that Julian treats you well too. Are you two together now? This made Jesse embarrassed. The noble young master Julian would not be interested in me. Who else could I be interested in besides you? Julian snorted softly in response. Eva immediately laughed at that. It appears that I have good acumen. I could immediately tell that you two are a couple. No, no, we are not together yet. Jesse quickly waved her hand in the air and denied it. Julian held a teacup as he added to Jesse's words, true. We're not a couple now, but we will be in the future. Jesse's face flushed when she heard that. Julian's proactiveness surprised Louis as well. Louis had thought he was quite successful in courting Eva, but Julian now appeared to be better at courting women than him. Julian is a good catch. Don't pass it up, Eva advised as she tugged on Jesse's hand. Jesse felt amused yet embarrassed at the same time. She was here today to check out Eva's relationship with Louis, but she was now the one being persuaded to be with Julian. Look at what you're saying, Eva. You sound as if you were my sister-in-law. Why don't you both be real sisters in law? Julian teased. Jesse and Eva both looked at each other, stunned. Only the brothers sitting across from them laughed. Louis then began asking questions about Julian's relationship. When did you start dating Jesse? Why wasn't I aware of it? Meanwhile, Jesse held her teacup in her hand. She, too, wanted to hear Julian say when he became interested in her. With a smile, Julian responded, we've only known each other for about two months. How would you know about it? When you were so preoccupied with your work every day. Julian's words startled Louis a little. True enough, Louis had indeed neglected his brother as he had focused his attention solely on his work. Chapter 17 28 Couple Bracelets After their meal, Julian brought Jesse back to the hotel for a rest. Eva, on the other hand, reasoned that she hadn't taken a walk through the streets in a long time and invited Louis to join her. Louis, of course, eagerly followed. There was an interesting antique street nearby that was usually crowded at night because it had many interesting toys. Eva truly enjoyed the lively atmosphere. It was just that the crowd was so dense that Louis had to hold her hand as he was afraid that she would get lost. With a cap and a mask on, Eva walked obediently by his side, looking just like a shy wife. Louis had his hand on her shoulders as he walked alongside her on the crowded street and then to the scenic area. Half an hour later, he led her back to the car as the sky darkened. 
Eva felt thirsty after getting into the car and grabbed a bottle of water to drink. After finishing half of it, she intended to put the bottle away, but the man beside her immediately took the bottle from her and began drinking from it. Seeing that, she couldn't help but feel her heart skip a beat at his gesture. While she was still dazed, the man leaned over from his side to hers to fasten her seatbelt. I can do it myself, she said quickly. These actresses will make you rethink good and evil. It's not true love if she doesn't do these ten things for you. However, even after fastening the seat belt, he did not go back to his seat. Instead, he held her chin and kissed her on the lips. Can't this man do things in the right place? We're in the parking lot, how dare he do this here? However, Louis couldn't help himself. He adored Eva so much that he wished he could hold her in his arms all the time. Eva awkwardly returned his kiss. Sensing that, Louis finally returned to his seat in satisfaction. You've improved. At least you know how to respond to my kiss now, he murmured, his gaze filled with his approval of her. Hearing that, she was rendered speechless. Who cares about his compliments? What a conceited guy. I'll definitely push him away next time. Louis then drove back to the hotel. Eva was in a good mood as she bought two red bracelets, which she was told would bring her good luck. She wasn't the type to believe it, but she still felt happy as the bracelets were lovely. She even bought two of them as they were a pair of couple bracelets. She did not have the opportunity to give it to Louis earlier, so she decided to give it to him later when they arrived at the hotel. When they arrived at the car park, she handed him one of the bracelets. This is for you. So, you bought it for me. Louis reached out his hand to take it. He didn't mind the red bracelet, and he wore it on his wrist right away. Such a red bracelet meant far more to him than the million-dollar watch on his wrist. It is said to bring good luck to whoever wears it. Wear it only if you want to, Eva mumbled. I like it as long as it's from you, Louis said softly. He was overjoyed that she was willing to buy him something. She then wore the other red bracelet that she had bought. They both now wore a pair of couple bracelets. After exiting the car, Eva quickly walked into the hotel while Louis followed her from behind. She then proceeded to her room when they reached their floors. However, he grabbed her wrist and said, seemingly pleading with her, sleep in my room tonight. I don't want to, Eva responded shyly. Please, Louis purred. Witnessing how the arrogant President Gilmore deigned to plead with her, Eva couldn't help but feel honored. Thus, celebrities who didn't let cheating scandals knock them. 10 Reasons Why Selena Gomez Has Billions of Fans With a shy and reserved expression, she said, I have to get my pajamas at least. A smile broke out on Louis's face when he heard that. Okay, I'll wait for you in the room. With that, Eva pushed open the door and entered her room, her face still flushed. What exactly am I doing? How can I agree to share a room with him? I'm well aware of how dangerous he is. Since I'm already back in my room, perhaps I should just stay here. But I've promised him that I will go over. Won't I be deceiving him if I didn't? She took a long while, struggling with what she should do. At last, she decided to be an honest person who kept her. Word. Chapter 1729 Slightly Drunk Even if I have no plans to sleep with him, I should let him know before I come back. Eva held a small bag in her hands that contained her pajamas inside. Arriving outside the man's room, she reached up and rang the doorbell. The door quickly opened from the inside. It was evident that the man was very worried that she might not come. You're here. Come on in. Louis turned sideways to let her in. She pursed her lips and said, I, I don't like sleeping with others. I'm worried that I might not fall asleep, so I. Before she could finish her sentence, he grabbed her with his long arms and forcefully pulled her into the room. I'll sleep in the guest room. You can have the master bedroom. His actions left her speechless, but she blabbered an invalid excuse anyway. It's getting late. Hurry up and take a shower he suggested in a low voice, hoping that she could get some rest as soon as possible. I'll sleep in the guest room. After saying that, she opened the door to the guest room and went inside. I guess I'll be housemates with him tonight. 
Then, she went inside for a shower. It took her half an hour to finish showering and washing her hair. Hence, it was fully dark outside by the time she dried her hair and came out of the room. At this moment, she saw Louis standing on the balcony and enjoying the wind. Why is he still awake? Eva walked out to the balcony to enjoy the night breeze as she felt a little restless. He was holding a glass of red wine in his hand. When he saw her walking over, he leaned against the railing in a sexy manner. His nightgown fell open slightly, and his firm chest muscles were faintly visible through the opening, giving him a wild and roguish atmosphere. She suddenly discovered that her mouth was a little dry, so she took the glass of red wine from his hand and gulped down the contents by herself. On the other hand, he watched her finish half a glass of red wine in one gulp and smiled. Do you want some more? Yes. It felt as though the red wine could quench her thirst, so she nodded. He went inside and poured another half glass of red wine for her. Taking the glass from him, she immediately began drinking again. She liked this type of red wine. There was a slight sweetness and tartness that gave the wine a rich aftertaste. If you like it so much, I'll give you two bottles next time, he said. This red wine was something that he specially brought for this occasion. Not only was it expensive, but the taste was also exquisite. Eva raised her eyebrows at those words. Okay. After she finished the half glass of wine, she handed the empty glass back to Louis. I want more. Aren't you worried that you might get drunk? I'll sleep better if I'm drunk. Why? Do you have a hard time falling asleep when you're with me? He asked her with a playful smile. She countered his question with another question. Are you going to get me more wine? Naturally, he was more than willing to get her more wine. That was because he liked the drunk her tonight. She looked even more charming and adorable than usual. Eva propped her chin on her hand, feeling a little drunk. Even so, she liked this hazy intoxicated feeling. It made her feel as though she could be more relaxed in front of this man. After she drank another half glass of red wine, she accidentally let out a belch in front of Louis. She immediately covered her mouth in horror, feeling extremely embarrassed about her unsightly behavior. Nevertheless, he simply smiled and stretched out his hand to stroke her cheek. That's what you get for drinking so much. She placed the wine glass down and used her hand to brush her long hair aside. At the same time, she intentionally leaned into his embrace, after which Louis's eyes darkened in appreciation as he enjoyed her initiative. If he had to be honest, Louis had already noticed Eva's feelings for him. She had never once rejected him in the past, so it could be seen that she had fancied him even before this. It was fortunate that he had not given up and waited for her all this while, the day when their feelings for each other would come to fruition was finally here. He hugged her and planted his thin lips in her hair. A faint scent of flowers filled his nose, making his heartstrings twitch slightly. An uncontrollable urge surged in his heart as a result, and he asked hoarsely, Would you like to sleep together tonight? No, Eva insisted despite being drunk. Why not? If I sleep in the same room with you, do you think I'll have any time to sleep? She complained slightly. Don't worry, I promise I'll let you sleep well. After Louis hoarsely finished his sentence, he reacted like a beast that had been eyeing its prey for a long time and pounced upon her as though she were his prey. She had understood the implications of her actions tonight. When she came here, she had already mentally prepared herself for what might happen. This man had always been intensely attracted to her, but her reserve as a woman had prevented her from taking the initiative. Eva, I love you. Leaning close, he whispered in her ear and his thin lips kissed her earlobes. In response, she hugged him tight and actively searched for his thin lips. Chapter 1730 Engagement The corners of the man's mouth curved into a smile. At this moment, the long wait he suffered previously was worth it. In another room, Jesse was chatting with Julian on the phone. Although they were only separated by one room, there was a unique charm in using written words that brought endless fun to the conversation. Lexi, who was nearby, felt extremely envious. Nevertheless, she was happy that Jesse was in a relationship with Julian because she believed that Jesse deserved to have him. 
To be honest, Jesse, I can't accept any woman being in a relationship with young Master Julian. You're the only one who gives me the feeling that the two of you are a match made in heaven when you're together, she said. Naturally, Jesse was overjoyed to hear those words. It was just that she did not wish to reveal their relationship to the public yet. Part of the reason was their current cooperation with each other. Their relationship would affect the promotional results of their movie, so they could only maintain a cooperative relationship for now. The fact that they were in a romantic relationship with each other had to be kept secret. Shiloh has undergone an incredible transformation over the years. These animal species have created their pharmacies. This point was something Lexi had also considered, so she suggested, but, Jesse, you and young Master Julian should not reveal your relationship to the public yet. He has many female fans. I'm worried that they might affect your movie premiere. Yeah, you're right. I've also considered that issue, so I will maintain my distance from him. Early the next morning, Eva vaguely heard the ringing of a phone. It was just that she was still a little sleepy, so she continued to sleep and felt Louis planting a kiss on her cheek. Immediately after that, he kicked off the blankets and got out of bed to answer the phone. It was at this moment that she was fully awake. He had gone out to the living room to answer the phone, so she wore her clothes and went out to accompany him. At this moment, she heard his voice entering her ears. Mr. Constantine, I will come back as soon as possible to discuss the engagement. Please give me a little more time. I will give you a proper explanation. Don't worry. I will fulfill the agreement that my parents made with you back. Then, I will not make things difficult for you. Eva paused in the middle of walking out into the living room. Engagement. Does he have an engagement? Why? Have I never heard him mention that before? When he finished his phone call and returned to the room, she was already on the bed and ready to sleep again. She did not wish to let him discover that she had eavesdropped on his phone call. During breakfast, Louis invited director Cooper to eat together so that he could ask about Eva's role in the scene. If her scenes could progress quickly, then she would be done in two days. Although he was in a rush to return and dissolve his engagement, he wanted to wait until Eva was finished so that he could bring her back to Averna with him. I don't want to be so rushed. I've been a little tired recently, so I want to rest before I continue filming. Eva realized that Louis wanted to wait for her to return to Averna, so she deliberately dragged things out because she didn't want to go back. After saying that, she looked up at the man. If you have something urgent, you should go back first. No worries. I can wait for you. I plan to stay here for another week or two. Are you planning to wait for me? She deliberately pointed out. Lisa underwent lap band surgery, totaling around $14,000. The OC cast now, real age and life partners, revealed. Louis pondered in silence for a moment. In that case, I'll go back and settle something this afternoon. I'll come back as soon as possible and wait for you to finish filming, then I'll bring you back to Averna. All right, you can go back first. She nodded. At 10.30 a.m., Louis left the hotel. On the other hand, Eva inquired about Julian's filming location today because she wanted to visit him. Julian was filming at the studio today. Thanks to his current role, he had many wire-flying scenes to film. Not to mention, he was filming with Jesse today. Their cooperation could be considered remarkably cohesive at this point. After they finished filming, Eva walked over and talked to Julian. Jesse was still filming at this moment, so they entered the resting lounge. Julian, I'd like to ask you something. Does your brother have an engagement? Julian was taken aback. How did you know? I overheard him on the phone this morning. Tell me, what is going on? He had been very young at the time. He was only five years old when his parents set up the engagement for his brother, and he later heard from his brother that this engagement was what brought the company's business back to life. Unfortunately, he did not know the clauses that were written in the engagement. It's true that Louis has an engagement. It's something our parents decided when they were still alive, but I believe that this engagement will not affect your relationship. 
Chapter 1731 An Unfamiliar Number. Why? That's because my brother has no feelings for Miss Constantine. Will there be any losses if your brother fails to go through with the engagement? Eva asked anxiously. I'm not too sure about that either. We might have to transfer the corresponding amount of company shares based on the loan from back then to the Constantine family. The Constantines have never asked us to return the money because it was considered their daughter's dowry. A bitter feeling surged through her heart. Does that mean Louis will have to pay a heavy monetary price to the Constantine family if he marries me? What about Miss Constantine? Does she have feelings for Louis? She inquired further. For a moment, Julian didn't know how to answer. Lucy Constantine was in love with his brother, but Louis had never even looked at her way before. In any case, she would not willingly allow the engagement to be dissolved so easily. Eva, don't think too much about this. I'm sure my brother will have a solution to this situation, he reassured. I understand. Eva nodded as she understood something. Miss Constantine is probably in love with Louis. That's why the Constantine family would rather refuse the money and force him to fulfill the contract instead. Julian returned to filming his scenes and Eva decided to head back to her car. At this moment, her phone rang. She picked up her phone and saw that it was an unfamiliar number. Hello, who is this? Hello, Miss Duncan. I am Lucy Constantine, Louis's fiancé. An aggressive voice came from the other end of the phone. She had just entered her car when she received the phone call. Taking a deep breath, she answered the other woman politely. Hello, Miss Constantine. I recently saw some rumors about you and Louis online. I don't know whether they are real or fake, but I'm guessing that they are fake. In any case, it's probably just a ruse for you to gain some popularity. Eva listened and denied the claims. You're right. The rumors are fake, not real. I have heard many stories about how people in the entertainment industry would use any means possible to increase their standing. Eva, I'm sure Louis played a huge role in your achieving your current position, but it's fine. You are earning money for him after all. I understand. Thank you for your understanding. My father has started discussing our marriage recently. If nothing goes wrong, you will be able to attend our wedding this year. Lucy had a confident voice as she spoke. That's great. I will come if I have the chance to, Eva answered. Do you know why I'm so confident that I will marry Louis? Leaving aside the debt that his parents owe to my father, we also have a contract in place. If he refuses to take me as his wife, then he will have to transfer 20% of his company's shares to my family. The value of those shares when converted to money is not something you can begin to understand. Even if you are Eva Duncan, I don't think that any man would be willing to pay such a high price for you. Eva paled considerably at those words, but she let out a soft laugh. Miss Constantine, I don't fully understand what you're saying. I'm just an actress after all. In any case, I wish happiness to both of you. It doesn't matter whether you understand or not. What matters is that you understand the gravity of the situation. Lucy hung up after she finished speaking. At that, Eva sighed softly. It turns out that the situation is more serious than I ever imagined. I never expected our relationship to involve such an astounding amount of monetary interest. She closed her eyes in exhaustion. The idea of running away came back again in full force to avoid causing any trouble for him. She sincerely did not wish for Louis to pay such a heavy price just to be together with her. It was enough that they once loved each other deeply. There was no need to be together for the rest of their lives. The intense preparations for a grand wedding were currently taking place in Averna. As the heroine of the wedding, Queenie passed every single day in a good mood. What's more, she discovered that she was carrying the crystallization of her love just this morning, she was pregnant. The elders of the Manson family were overjoyed by the news. After all, they finally received the long-awaited news about their future grandchild. Nigel had not wanted his wife to experience the hardships of pregnancy so soon, but Queenie had chosen to let nature take its course instead. She had fallen in love with the idea, especially after seeing the young girl from the Presgrave family. Therefore, she 
was wondering in excitement what her first baby with Nigel would look like. Chapter 1732 Back to Averna. Would the baby look like him? Or would it look like me? Would it be a boy? Or a girl? In any case, Queenie was not. Stressed by her pregnancy and she simply wanted to naturally welcome her first baby into the world. In that way, the date of the wedding gradually approached with only one more week to go. The elders of the Silverstein family were living on cloud nine. They used to be very worried about the person whom their daughter was going to marry, but there was nothing for them to worry about now. On the side of the filming crew, Jesse was also looking forward to going home to attend the wedding. In the blink of an eye, she had already been filming for nearly a month. Three days later, she and Julian both applied for leave so that they could step away from the filming crew to attend the wedding. As bridesmaids and groomsmen, they had to be prepared for the wedding. Eva finished filming her role two days later. She had shortened the filming time because she wanted to complete her scenes earlier and returned to Averna as soon as possible. Three days later, Julian arranged for his brother's private plane to come over. Then, the three of them boarded the plane and headed to Averna together. On the plane, Jesse discovered that Eva was gloomy and unhappy. She had heard from Julian that Lily had an engagement that had yet to be dissolved. Eva, why don't you eat something? Jesse sat opposite Eva. Unforgettable moment. Iconic, back to the future, cast reunites. People say terrible things about his wife, but he stood by her. Thanks, Jesse. I can't stomach anything at the moment. Eva shook her head. What are your plans for the future? Jesse asked. Eva considered the question for a moment, after which she shook her head. I guess I'll rest first. I've been feeling tired recently. Let's go out for afternoon tea and dinner if we have the time. Sure, that's a great idea. Jesse was elated to have made a friend like Eva. It was something she would never even have dared to imagine in the past. When the plane landed, two cars came over to pick them up. One car was there to bring Jesse and Julian back to the Silverstein residence while the other car was there to bring Eva home. Jesse received a phone call from her mother while she was on the road. It had been a month since she last saw her parents, so they missed her badly. They initially wanted to visit her at work, but she had not allowed them to visit. Since she wanted them to focus on her sister's wedding first, she then informed the man beside her. My mother said that she has prepared a feast and invited you over to our house for lunch. Okay. Julian nodded, not bothering to be reserved. Let's maintain some distance when we reach my home, okay? Jesse suggested. Why? He frowned. Chronicles of Narnia, fans were bemused to see how she looks now. What are the cast of the Disney movie? Holes, doing now, she shyly explained, it's embarrassing. She couldn't shake the feeling that getting into a relationship with Julian so quickly seemed to indicate that she had used some sort of underhanded means to win him over. Therefore, it was better if their relationship had progressed slowly. Julian immediately saw through her thoughts. Although he was both angry and amused by her antics, he could only respect her decision. All right, fine, we're just normal friends. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. Jesse nodded, feeling happy. Just as Eva's car entered the highway off the airport, she received a phone call from Louis. Hello. Come to my house. The man's deep and hoarse voice was pleading with her. I'm tired, and I want to rest at home. Let's not meet each other for the next few days. She refused his request. And suggested, you should prepare the documents for the contract termination. Are you still thinking about terminating your contract? No matter how far our relationship progresses, the termination of my contract will not be delayed. I want to terminate the contract. You need to keep to your word, she replied seriously. Come to my house and talk. Forget it. I will discuss the termination of my contract with the legal department myself. You can focus on your own work. Without my consent, they won't even bother to talk to you in the first place, the man on the other end of the phone responded forcefully. Eva paused for a moment before she asked, can you be reasonable? Do you want me to sue you in court? Will that finally make you happy? Can you bring yourself to sue me? 
If I have to take that step, then I will definitely go ahead and sue you. She was not joking around with Louis. He sighed and cursed softly. What a heartless person. Despite listening to such doting words, she felt a sense of bitterness inside her heart. She told the man on the other side of the phone, I'm hanging up. Don't call me if there's nothing important. Eva returned to her apartment, which was a large and luxurious unit in an excellent location that had been allocated to her by the company. She sent her assistant, Linda, back to rest. Then, she walked from the elevator to the door of her apartment. It had been a long time since she came back, so it was fortunate that she had servants coming to clean her apartment at regular intervals. Chapter 1733 Home Eva opened the door and walked into her apartment. Then, she suddenly saw a men's suit on the sofa and couldn't help tensing in fear at the sight. Who came to my house? Is there somebody in my house? She was descending into a full-blown panic attack when she suddenly recalled that the security system of this community was one of the best in the area. There was no way anybody could enter her house that easily. Just as her heart was threatening to jump out of her chest, she suddenly saw a figure emerging from the balcony and walking toward her. You're back. As soon as she saw this person, she yelled, how did you enter my house? It was none other than her employer. Louis, don't you know that the company has a copy of the key for all the houses that are allocated to you? She remained silent. Is that his reason for barging into my house? That's so unreasonable. I told you I need to rest. Hurry up and return to your company. After saying that, Eva put her luggage down and turned to walk toward her room so that she could get some rest. However, at this very moment, Louis' slender but firm arm circled her waist from behind. I missed you. I missed you so much. Her body stiffened for several seconds, but a numbing current soon surged from the soles of her feet to the top of her head. His very aura was attracting her, so much so that all the cells in her body were reacting to him. Let go of me. Eva struggled hard to free herself. I'm not letting go. You refused to come to my house, so I had no choice but to come to yours instead, Louis said. Hoarsely, he had to meet her today. Otherwise, he simply could not focus on anything else. She spun around to face him, hoping to use her eyes to chase him away. Contrary to her expectations, she was captured by the deep affection in his eyes as soon as she made eye contact with him. She couldn't bring herself to say any harsh words to him, so she could only beg him. Please leave. I'm begging you. Be that as it may, he caressed her cheek and held her lower jaw gently. Lifting her face slightly, he planted a kiss on her lips. I'm not going anywhere tonight. I'm going to stay right by your side. She closed her eyes in helplessness. His kiss made her entire heart tremble in response, and she couldn't stop herself from hugging him tightly. He leaned down and carried her, then he walked toward her bedroom. Her rebellious intention to resist his advances seemed almost pitifully ineffective in the face of this man. Comma. At the Silverstein residence, the elders of the Silverstein family happily welcomed their second daughter home. They had missed her terribly. After not seeing her for an entire month. At the same time, they were also very welcoming toward Julian, who came home with her. Mr. Gilmore, thank you for taking care of Jesse during this period. It's nothing. It's what I should have done. I heard that you're Nigel's best friend, so you can already be regarded as family. We have troubled you greatly, Brandon said. Maggie held her daughter's hand and pulled her daughter to the sofa. Then, she sat down and observed her. Daughter, you've lost weight. You've lost weight again. You should take the time to increase your nutrition intake. While you're home these few days. Mom, I didn't lose any weight. I ate very well. Jessie laughed. She was somebody who couldn't gain weight no matter how much she ate. However, she had to control her food intake now that she was filming. What about Queenie and Nigel? They went to the wedding planner to prepare the final touches of their wedding. We'll go out and have a lavish dinner tonight. Young Master Julian, please join us later. Maggie invited. Julian smiled and nodded. Sure, Mrs. Silverstein. Lunch at the Silverstein residence was a scrumptious feast. After Julian finished eating, he received a phone call from the company. 
There was an advertising contract that he needed to discuss, so he had to go back to the company for the discussion. He ultimately had no choice but to leave early. When he was about to depart, Jesse walked him to the car. It felt as though they had spent an entire month together, so she felt a little reluctant to see him leave. Call me if there's anything, he said, seemingly reluctant to close the car window that was rolled down. All right, go on, I'll see you tonight. After seeing Julian off, Jessie went back inside to accompany her parents. Maggie had prepared many gifts for her, including jewelry and formal dresses. These were items that her mother had bought for her because they seemed to suit her well. Mom, I'm planning to visit the orphanage in the afternoon and bring some presents over for them. We'll go with you. No need, Mom. I can go alone. I'll be back after a short chat with the director of the orphanage. Chapter 1734 The Most Beautiful Smile All right. Please stay safe. At 3 p.m., Jesse prepared many gifts and brought them to the orphanage. It's so happened that a reporter was skulking around the entrance of her house, especially after he had followed her from the airport. News regarding her was very valuable recently, so he did not leave. He later followed her car when Jesse left the house. He was surprised that her destination turned out to be an orphanage. Not to mention, he could easily take many pictures of the yard from his car. He watched as she gave out presents, held hands with the children at the orphanage, and chatted with them happily. She even hugged and coaxed a crying child. The reporter couldn't help feeling a little heavy-hearted after taking so many pictures. He originally wanted to sell pictures of her negative activities, but she turned out to be such a kind lady instead. She did not bother to maintain her image as an idol and seemed completely indifferent about getting her clothes dirty. In fact, her smile around the children was bright and happy. In the end, the reporter sold the pictures he took to some media outlets at a low price and left. That evening, the media published these pictures with the caption, The Most Beautiful Smile. The Jessie in the pictures was the real her, not a pretentious version of herself. Her smile, when she was with the children, was very infectious. As a result, the fans who were starting to follow her learned about her honest and kind nature. Compared to the idols who posed for pictures, those pictures and videos of her made others aware of her sincerity. The number of her fans abruptly increased as a result. When Jessie returned home, she received a phone call from Lexi telling her that she had been followed during her trip to the orphanage in the afternoon. On the contrary, she was unhappy about being publicized in this manner because these were things that she should have done in the first place. In any case, there was nothing much she could do as the photos had been reposted countless times. Fortunately, her fans loved her very much and did not perceive her in a negative light due to this incident. That night, the two sisters finally met each other at the restaurant. Queenie held hands with Jessie. Although they looked very similar, it was easy to differentiate between the two ladies. Meanwhile, Nigel called Julian and invited the latter over for dinner. It didn't take long for Julian to appear. Inside the restaurant, the two equally handsome men were a sight to behold. They caused all the serving staff. Passing by to experience an increased heart rate, and even the female guests couldn't help sneaking glances at them. However, they soon noticed the pair of women holding hands and chatting away happily behind the men. The sight left them sighing in amazement. What good-looking couples. These two couples were simply too good-looking to be true. Some people also recognized Julian and Jesse as idols, but did not dare to approach and greet them. Julian generally gave off the impression that he was a cold and unapproachable noble. That was why his fans knew to keep their distance and not disturb him even when they ran into him. The two elders of the Silverstein family had been waiting for the arrival of their daughters at the restaurant. When they saw those four walking in together, they had the feeling that Julian would eventually become part of the family. It was only a matter of time. Dad, Mom, the two daughters sat on each side of the parents while the two men sat on the other side of these women. This feeling made the two elders of the Silverstein family absolutely overjoyed. Thanks to the two young couples at dinner, the atmosphere was extremely jovial. Queenie also shared her happy 
news with the rest of her family. So, I'm going to be an aunt. Jessie was looking forward to her new identity. In addition, she was very happy that her sister was going to have a baby. Congratulations, Nigel. Julian's eyes were filled with envy. After that, he glanced at the woman who was looking happy to be an aunt in the future. Jessie had squeezed in between Queenie and her mother, participating in the discussion about what to prepare for. The birth of the baby. Nigel's expression was also filled with anticipation. When he realized that he was about to become a father, he became incredibly emotional and grateful. He was grateful that the woman he loved the most was going to bring a new life into his life. After dinner, the two daughters and their mother took the chance to go shopping at a nearby shopping center. The three men naturally accompanied them to prevent his fans from recognizing him and disturbing their shopping. Spree, Julian wore a mask to conceal his face. Chapter 1735 The Ugly Ducklings Transformation Unfortunately, many reporters were lurking in the shopping center. One of them was initially following another celebrity, but his sharp eye had spotted Jesse and Queenie among the crowd. He was immediately stunned. Jesse is part of a twin. That was an extremely rare piece of news. Moreover, if he was not mistaken, the two men following behind them were the president of the Manson Group and Julian Gilmore. The old man accompanying them was also very familiar as he could often be seen gracing the front page of the business magazines. Thus, the reporter hurriedly took pictures of this unexpected group of people browsing the shops. It wasn't until they left the shopping center that the reporter searched for information on the old man's background. Information. Sure enough, he was right to think that the old man looked very familiar. The old man turned out to be Brandon Silverstein, a renowned giant in the food and beverage industry. It would seem that Jesse was his daughter and the second daughter of the Silverstein family. Unexpectedly, the information uploaded on the internet claiming that she had entered the entertainment industry without any backing was completely wrong. Not only did she have a strong family background, but her sister was also married to the future head of the Manson Group. No wonder Julian was willing to go shopping with her. It could be seen that the Silverstein family's daughters held incredible charm. They shopped until 9 p.m. Nigel then brought Queenie home while the two elders of the Silverstein family brought their youngest daughter home. Likewise, Julian returned to his apartment. Early the next morning, a drowsy Jessie received a phone call from Lexi, informing her that there was a new scandal being circulated in the media. She forced her sleepy eyes open and read the article about her. The title was, The Mysterious Background of the Newly Debuted Actress, Jessie Silverstein. When she saw the picture of their entire family shopping together last night, she propped her chin on her hand with a sinking sense of helplessness. She was coming to realize that she no longer had a private life since she entered the entertainment industry. It didn't matter where she went because she would still be photographed. Jesse, it turns out you're the Silverstein family's second daughter. Everybody in the entertainment industry is shocked. We all thought that you were Cinderella, but the truth is you're a swan. That's right. I was transformed from an ugly duckling. Jesse laughed and replied through a voice message. To be honest, it was all thanks to Julian's help that she found her family again. If he had not recognized her at a glance, she did not know how much longer it would have taken for her to find her family. If she had missed the information about her relatives, then she might never have met her parents or her sister in her entire life. As such, she was very grateful to Julian. After hearing that he was filming an advertisement at the company today, she was consumed by the urge to visit him while he was filming. She wanted to see how charming he was while on the set. In the past, she could only gain scraps of information through media releases. In contrast, she now had the opportunity to visit the scene in person. How could she let such an opportunity slip through her fingers? Although she was still a little sleepy, there was a strong driving force that pushed her out of bed. She had worn many heavy industrial costumes while filming on the set. Hence, she couldn't help feeling very refreshed when she wore a simple t-shirt and hoodie after she finished washing up. Jessie informed her parents about her plans before she left the house. 
Her father's driver came to pick her up. Although she had her driver's license, she had never driven a car ever since she obtained her license, so she did not dare to drive on the road. She headed straight toward the headquarters of the Gilmore Corporation and was immediately recognized by the staff upon her arrival. Inquiring about the location of Julian's advertisement shoot, she learned that he was on the sixth floor. Moreover, the filming was already underway since he arrived very early in the morning. As soon as she heard that, she quickly ran off at the astounding speed of a fan chasing their favorite celebrity. Charging straight into the elevator, she went straight to the sixth floor. She was Julian's biggest fan today. Arriving at the shooting location, she discovered that the film set was very luxurious. The mixture of gray and silver backdrop gave off an extremely classy and elegant feeling. At this moment, Julian was wearing a black shirt and black pants. His shirt was half open for the makeup artist to style, and his entire being was exuding a sense of masculinity. Beneath his open shirt were faintly visible firm chest muscles that made him extremely attractive. Jessie stood behind the staff and peeped secretly. She did not disturb him and simply admired him from afar. This man was truly a walking pheromone billboard, especially when the black shirt turned him into a masculine and sexy man. Chapter 1736 Blush Jessie's throat began to feel dry as she continued to stare. She picked up the bottle of water beside her and took a few swigs. Julian went to his shooting spot and sat on a swivel top stool that showed off his long legs in all their glory. He was holding a rose in his hand, taking a whiff of its scent. His brows were trimmed and almost pointed, his thin lips pursed, his eyes filled with longing. Jesse couldn't help but be held captivated by the sight of him. Right then, he switched his pose. He spotted her right away as he looked beyond the camera. The sight of her almost made him get out of character as a hint of a smile flashed across his eyes. The smile in his eyes filled her heart with sweetness, and she returned a brilliant smile of her own. The shoot was over in a moment. All the crew members were cleaning things up for the next session. Ashley then came to Jesse. Jesse, young master Julian requires you in the waiting room. After getting informed of that, she went over as per request. When she opened the door to the waiting room and entered, she noticed Julian was the only occupant inside. He was still wearing the clothes from earlier, and she couldn't help but peer at him like he was some work of art. You're so handsome, she praised. In the past, she would feel blessed just from having a few glances at the shots of Julian. So, naturally, she was ecstatic now that she had the privilege to see him at work closely. Julian cocked his eyebrow upon hearing that. Do you like it? He wished for her approval. Of course. In fact, I love it, Jesse spoke with passion and enthusiasm. He extended his hand. Come here. She took a seat on the couch and caressed his clothes. Silky smooth, she remarked in her mind. You came here quite early. Did you come here for me? He narrowed his eyes as he asked. Her cheeks burned, but she confessed, yes, that's right. It's my day off. I'd have slept in if it were not because I would like to see you. A contented smile tugged on his lips. All of a sudden, he leaned into her, and she ended up lying on the couch in an attempt to keep some distance between them. He placed his hands on either side of her frame, pushing himself up. The silky shirt he wore slid down and revealed his sturdy, sexy abs. Julian had never shown his abs to anyone, but now she could stare at them as much as she wanted. It would have been a dream come true if she could touch them, but the position we're in is quite awkward. What is he trying to? Jessie's thought was cut short when he leaned down and kissed her forehead, and she closed her eyes out of reflex. That forehead kiss was as far as he would go, or at least that was what he would do at first. However, now that she was playing along, he might as well take up on her offer. He moved down to the tip of her nose and gave it a peck. Then, he started moving downward again and pressed his lips against hers, sucking on it softly now and then. Her mind went blank out of shock, but her heart pounded loud and fast out of embarrassment. Oh my gosh, were kissing in the waiting room while the crew members are all going around outside. This is going to be embarrassing. If we get found, 
but, his kiss is just so gentle. She instinctively held his lower torso. Holy moly, his fans would kill. Me if they saw me hugging their idol. After what had happened last time, Ashley was on her guard. A few crew members tried to go into the waiting room to unload some stuff, but she stopped them. Sorry, but young Master Julian is doing something important. Inside, he will not take kindly to any visitors, she said. She had no idea what was happening inside, but her job was to keep her boss's personal affairs away from the public's prying eyes. Eventually, Jessie found herself leaning on Julian's chest, his hold on her tight. A moment later, the hug ended, but she could still feel the strong thump of his heartbeat smashing against her chest. Oh God, this is so embarrassing. She had never even held a boy's hand before. This was her first relationship, yet her boyfriend was the man of many women's dreams. Thus, she had yet to learn how to deal with this kind of stuff at times. Chapter 1737 To the Amusement Park I hope I didn't scare you. Julian looked at her, amused. Jessie shook her head and met his gaze. You didn't. I like. Kissing you. His heart leapt with joy upon hearing that. He leaned down and pecked her lips. So, do you now? Understand how I feel about you. Of course, she did. Still, she had a hard time believing in all of this as everything felt like a dream to her. Do you? Like me. That was her insecurity speaking. Solemnly, he answered, yes. Jesse rested her head on his chest and stared at his collarbone before reaching over. To touch it. Julian huffed, stop touching. Hey, you just kissed me, so why can't I touch you? That's so unfair. It's only fair if I get to touch him since he kissed me just now. He looked at her with resignation in his eyes. That's not what I meant. You can touch me, but I can't go out looking. Like this, you know. You can't expect me to stay in this room forever. Oh oh, that's what he's trying to say. She quickly got up. I'll go out, then. You do what you have to do. She picked her bag up and combed her hair before exiting the room. She was so embarrassed that she couldn't even look at Ashley, who stood right outside the waiting room. Jessie made her way to the coffee shop on the third floor, but her face was still red. Gilmore Corporation had built the coffee shop specifically for its artists and employees. It was a high-end place. She waited for Julian in the coffee shop, and it was not until 11 a.m. that he finally showed up. This time, he was in casual attire, yet he looked elegant nonetheless. She couldn't help but steal a glance at him before staring at the ground swiftly soon after. We're having lunch. Together. Then, it's free time. You can go wherever you want, and I'll come with you. Really, I can go anywhere I want. She asked, the anticipation in her voice almost palpable. Yep. Can I go to the amusement park, then? She had never gone to an amusement park her whole life, not even once. Tickets were too expensive for her back then. Even though she had reunited with her family, she still hadn't had the chance to go to an amusement park. Now that they had time, she wanted to see what that place was like. And with Julian by my side, this is going to be great. Sure, I'll go, he smiled. They departed for the amusement park after having lunch. Ashley bought all the disguise items for them on their way masks, sunglasses, and hats. Jesse went for a mask and a hat, while Julian only wore a pair of sunglasses. Apparently, he wasn't worried about getting recognized. Ashley pleaded, Sir, your fans can recognize you from a mile away if you have no mask on. You should wear one. For the sake of public safety. I'm his fan, and I don't even need to see his face to recognize him. His body shapes enough, Jesse remarked. He smiled as he looked at her. So, you've fallen for me even before we met, huh? Yep. I saw you during my first year in the industry and have fallen for you since then. She smiled smugly. Julian straightened her hat and her mask. Then, he pushed her hair back. Ashley watched on as the couple flirted with each other. Hey, do you mind? I'm still single, you know. Cut back on. The show of affection, all right. Even though it was on a weekday, the amusement park had quite a few visitors. Ashley entered with the couple, acting as their errand girl. Though, there was a perk, 
she could go on the rides as well. Julian and Jesse looked like a perfect couple together. Ashley bought Jesse a cute headband the moment they entered the amusement park. Jesse took her hat off and wore the headband. It was indeed an adorable sight to behold. I'll snap a pic for you. 2. Ashley held her phone up and trotted ahead. Julian pulled Jesse into his embrace, and she leaned on his chest bashfully while making a peace sign. Chapter 1738 at Eva's home. It was a photo taken with a phone, but the couple was gorgeous enough to make the picture look like it was taken with a DSLR. Jesse took Ashley along with her to take a ride on the carousel. Julian waited for them outside the ride, holding Jesse's bag and her drink like any other boyfriend would. B. Only thing that set him apart from the other boyfriends was that he was a drop-dead handsome guy. As he waited for the ladies, he took it as his responsibility to take photos of his girlfriend. His phone was filled with pictures of her from all kinds of angles. Right after Jessie got off the carousel, her attention was drawn by the screams coming from the other side. Oh, a roller coaster. She then pointed at it and said, I want to ride. That one. Ashley felt her legs buckle upon realizing which ride Jessie was referring to. I can't go with you on that one, Jessie. Jessie held Julian's arm. In that case, you come with me. Lovingly, he replied, sure. She thought she could stomach the roller coaster, but she soon realized how wrong she was. She came off the ride looking pallid as a ghost. She held onto Julian like a koala. Hugging a eucalyptus tree. I shouldn't have done that. So, still wanna go for another round? He grinned. Jessie waved her hands violently. No, no thanks. They went for other rides after that, and Delight returned to her in no time. She also loved that romantic emotions were stirring fast between her and Julian during this trip. Ashley parted ways with them halfway through, leaving the couple on their own. Jessie jostled through the crowd, holding onto Julian's hand. She was as happy as a lark, and the euphoria she felt infected him. As they moved through the crowd, his eyes only fixed on her and no one else. When she found out there would be a fireworks show and a mini-concert later in the night, she couldn't wait for noontime to pass. We can do more stuff at night, and there'll be less risk of having our identities found out. They rested on a bench as dusk approached. Jessie was getting drowsy for a moment, and she leaned on Julian's chest and napped for a while. Shocking robots that exist and function very similar to humans Here's what the cast of the Priyanka opens up about love, family, and motherhood. Bradley Cooper and all the fi. He let her rest on his lap while he played some games on his phone. It didn't take long for her to recharge, and soon enough, she was ready to get back to the fun. Street lamps shone upon the land, lighting up the amusement park. This was the perfect scene for couples to stroll around. They got on a few more rides and awaited the fireworks show. It was stated to begin at 8.30 p.m., and they got themselves a good spot right before it started. Jessie leaned in. Julian's embrace as she watched the fireworks go off in the night sky. Whenever she shuddered from the sound of explosions, Julian would cover her ears. Any woman would feel moved that the man they liked cared so much for them, including her. After the fireworks, they came back out to rendezvous with Ashley. Then, they headed home. When they sent Jessie back to her home, Julian was rather reluctant to bid her goodbye. That trip to the amusement park had drawn them closer to each other, after all. Meanwhile, Eva returned to her neighborhood from a meeting with her friend. Louis went to work this morning, so I hope he's probably not at my home now. However, her hope was dashed. She came home to a dimly lit living room, and the said man was sitting on the couch with a laptop on his lap, working. Why'd you come here? God, what should I do with him? You seem to be less than welcoming. He shut the laptop and approached her. Then, he took her bag and said, Well, I find most places boring. Your home is the only exception. So, do pardon me for the intrusion. God. If this weren't the house I got from the company, I'd have changed the locks ages ago. Are you tired? Up for dinner. I can treat you if you'd like. Thanks, but no thanks. She shook her head. I'm full already, anyway. Wait a minute. She turned her head sharply to look at the man. Don't tell me you haven't had dinner. Yet. 
Ah, she pays attention to details. Louis shook his head. I haven't. I thought you'd come back home early, but as you can see, my prediction has gone awry. It's already way past ten. You could at least get some supper, you know. I'm not your mom. You don't have to wait for me like a hungry child. Chapter 1739 No matter the price. I still have some food my assistant gave me this morning. After a moment of contemplation, Eva asked, What? Would you like? I'm fine with anything. Louis smiled as he answered. He would love to say he wanted her, but he figured she might get mad and kick him out of her house if he did that. She opened up her fridge. Let's see. We have some veggies here. It's a bit late, so I'm not going to make anything. Impressive. I guess I'll just make some poached eggs for him. After making up her mind about what she was going to make, she grabbed the ingredients she needed out of the fridge. She then returned to her room and changed into casual attire before coming back out. Louis was still working, so she entered the kitchen without saying anything. A moment later, he could hear the sounds of cooking coming out of the kitchen, and a smile tugged his lips. I've been dreaming of this. A gentle wife and a warm, fuzzy home. It's not exactly what I had in mind, but we have got to start somewhere. Inside the kitchen, Eva was putting her utmost attention into preparing some simple poached eggs for him. She also cracked some eggs into it to add some flavor to it. With how famous she was getting, eating out was no longer an option for her. Most of the time, she would cook for herself, thanks to that, she was now a half-decent cook. Thus, Louis couldn't help but drool slightly at the tantalizing smell of the poached eggs she had made. She came back out and served the food on the table. He shut his laptop off and approached the table. Smells. Good, he remarked as he took a whiff. Care to join me? No thanks, I'm on a diet. She shook her head. Why would you need a diet? You're not even fat. A frown creased his forehead. I hold you every day, and I can. Tell you're not out of shape at all. Just eat, she said. And you should go home after you're done eating. Louis knew she wasn't trying to chase him off for real as he didn't sense any bite in her tone. I should finish the food first, he thought. Eva then headed for the bathroom to take a shower. He finished his poached eggs and did the dishes. By the time they were done, it was already 11.30 p.m. She stood on the balcony in her pajamas, uncorking a bottle of wine. Louis came in with a glass in his hand to join her. She stared into the distance, and suddenly, she asked, So, what are you going to do about your arranged marriage? The question made him freeze for a few moments. He had wanted to hide it from her, but she still found out about it in the end. How did you know about this? Julian told me. I asked him, so don't blame the guy. She frowned slightly as she continued, I know this is hard for you, so I reckon we should break up. It is the best solution. This is for the best. He can marry the girl his family. Arranged for him, while I can go overseas once the contract is over. Louis held her hand firmly. Breaking up won't solve anything. I won't let that happen. You're not leaving. Please, you don't have to do this. She tried to pull her hand back, but he refused to let go. Instead, he pulled her into his embrace and rested his chin on her shoulder. Are you really going to leave me behind? Eva stiffened up. That was the one question she had never spent time considering, but she knew she could never leave him. We're going to be together, no matter the price. He looked at her lovingly. I won't let you run away again. Tears glistened in her eyes. But, you'll have to pay a heavy price for that. I'll handle this, don't worry. Then, we'll have a wedding. A formal announcement that you'll be my wife, he promised. She looked at him, tears of happiness welling in her eyes. He leaned down to kiss her tears away. Then, he held her cheeks gently before pressing his lips against hers. Everything stopped for a few moments. Eva could feel him taking her glass away before he picked her up in a princess carry and headed inside. Comma. The Constantines were businesspeople relying on the operation of the malls to earn profits. However, their business had been slow as of late, and their profits had been declining, so they had to use a trump card to solve their dilemma. They had to invoke their daughter's arranged marriage with a certain man. 
Chapter 1740 Romantic Rival Appears Stardom Corporation was a multinational conglomerate. Its net worth was at least ten times what the Constantine's business was worth. Stardom used to be a small entertainment company, but thanks to Louis, it was now developed into a big and successful company. Lucy had just returned home. She came to the living room and saw her father looking distressed as he sat on the couch. She took a seat beside him and promised, don't worry, dad. I'll marry him, I promise. Then, we won't have to worry about the business anymore. You have to do whatever you can. They say he's dating one of his female artists. Bah, she's merely his plaything, I'm sure. Anyway, I ain't worried much about that. I'll just have to make sure he won't sleep around once we're married. She was a broad-minded woman. She didn't expect Louis to keep his chastity since she had also slept around. All she wanted was to be his wife, as he was the man she loved. I'll talk to them tomorrow. She wasn't planning on talking to Louis. Instead, she wanted to see Eva, for she was the one standing between her and Louis. When Eva woke up the next morning, Louis was already gone, but there was a slip of paper with a message written on it lying before her bed. The message read, don't forget to have your breakfast. Install these measures to keep your household safe from COVID-19. A mental health chatbot which helps people with depression. She got out of bed and went to the dining room. A smile crept on her face when she noticed a set of breakfast was already placed on the table. All her life, she was used to living by herself, but now that she had someone taking care of her, it surprisingly felt nice. Just when she was about to have breakfast, her phone rang. She picked it up. Who's this? Miss Duncan, I would like to talk to you, a woman said imperiously. Oh, it's Lucy. Eva then replied, sorry, I don't have time. It won't take long, Miss Duncan. It'll only be half an hour. I'll be waiting for you in the coffee shop right outside your neighborhood. With that, Lucy hung up. Eva stared at the breakfast on the table, sighing. Why does she want to talk to me? Reluctantly, she went to meet up with Lucy. Eva saw her in the coffee shop and figured she must have dressed herself up for the occasion. Lucy was quite a beauty, but not as beautiful as Eva. Everyone knew Eva as the most beautiful woman in the community. She looked just like a goddess, and most people didn't have looks of her level. Lucy stared at her with envy hidden deep in her eyes. Miss Duncan, I heard you're living with Louis. Do you wish to marry him? She cut to the chase. Eva mused for a moment and nodded. I do have that idea, yes. I would advise you to give it up. Our marriage arrangement is bound by law. You're the homewrecker in our relationship. Should your fans know you seduced my fiancé, that'll be it for your career. The look on Eva's face changed slightly. Mind your tongue. You two haven't even married yet, so I'm not a home. Wrecker. Kate and Prince William rumored to be planning for a fourth baby. It seems that Prove TV has gone too far. We will be married soon, though. What will you do when that happens, Miss Duncan? What are you trying to say? Fury was starting to boil within Eva. I'm telling you to leave him. What makes you think you can do that? Eva narrowed her eyes. Lucy had been bossy from the moment they met. Eva might be a patient woman, but this was a bit too much, even for her. Do you have any idea what Louis has to sacrifice just to date you? 20% of his company's shares. That's astronomical. Unless he marries me, my family reserves the right to claim our shares in the company. Silence took Eva. Do you really think you're worth that much? If his company runs into trouble, all his love for you will turn into resentment. Men like Louis love nothing more than their work, Lucy sneered. He doesn't love you as much as he loves his work. Chapter 1741 asked for it. Eva remained silent. She had that talk with Louis the night before. Eva, you're beautiful enough to marry any other wealthy man you want. You don't have to obsess over Louis. Lucy took a step back and pleaded, please. I don't want to make things ugly, especially not with the Gilmores. Eva met Lucy's eyes as she said icily, but he doesn't like you. Lucy's face fell. What did you say? How did you know that? Because he told me I'm the only one he loves. He won't fall for anyone else. 
Not ever, Eva answered calmly. Miss. Constantine, you won't be happy marrying a man who doesn't love you. How can you be sure he doesn't like me? I've known him for years. He fell for me five years ago and has been waiting for me to return his feelings since. Then, I'm not trying to brag, but he really loves me. Eva was trying to dissuade Lucy from pressing on with the marriage. She's been slaying the industry since childhood. Divine divas, iconic women of pop. She couldn't leave him behind now, not when the alternative was, this woman. If Louis would hold on, then so. Would she? Why you? Lucy's face turned red from anger. She would have laughed it off had any other woman said that, but. Not Eva. Lucy knew whatever she said was the truth, after all. Eva, beauty fades with age. He won't stay in love. With you once you lose your beauty. Eva blinked. But at least he still likes me now. Anyway, I'll be taking my leave now. I'm busy. With that, she got up. And left. Lucy was left alone, feeling humiliated. She's showing off, huh? I bet he won't stay in love with you if you lose that. Pretty face of yours. Just then, her face was contorted with envy. And I'm going to ruin that face. Eva emerged from the coffee shop, basking in the warm sunshine. It felt like a weight had been lifted off her shoulders. She wanted to call Louis to tell him she would accept his love. The moment Louis exited the conference room, his assistant happily reported, President Gilmore, I heard Eva. Came. A smile tugged his lips as he whisked out his phone to call Eva. The call went through easily. Hello. You're here. Yes. Come to my office. I'm just here to talk about the contract termination. So, I'm not going. Up there, she replied. What am I going to do with her? He thought to himself in resignation before descending the building to see her. At the same time, Eva was in the legal department, talking to the manager. The manager was in a dilemma. He didn't. Oscar flashback 40 years ago to 1983. Unexpected moments. Six secret origin stories of modern mouth. Watering meal. Have enough clearance to handle her contract termination, but she wouldn't let him leave without a result. If you're not giving me an answer, then we'll have to do it by the book. Eva was in a pure white dress, and her eyes were filled with determination. The intensity of her gaze was enough to intimidate most people. Please, Eva, you know there's nothing I can do about this. I can't do anything without the boss's orders. I don't have the authority to handle anything related to you. I don't care. You're printing the contract, then I'll sign the papers, Eva said. Fine, I'll print it out. I can do that much. The manager was about to send someone to print the contract, but then he saw his boss at the office's doorstep. His eyes shone with hope as he stood up. President Gilmore, you've come. Just in time. Eva heaved a sigh. He came to stop me again, didn't he? I'll handle this. You do your work, Louis said. The manager scooted off immediately. Louis turned his attention to Eva, one look into her eyes, and he knew she wouldn't stand down. He took a seat and faced her. If you stay, you can have whatever you want, he said, trying to persuade her to stay. Chapter 1742 Acceptance Eva blinked. Anything, really. Yes, you can ask for anything. Other than contract termination, of course. In that case, give me your shares, she proposed. Louis was stunned for a moment. You want to manage the company? Is that a no? She cocked her eyebrow. Of course not. I can give it to you if that's what you want, he replied. But the pressure would be great. I would like to ask you a question. If you were to give me your shares, does that mean the Constantines can't have it anymore? She asked seriously. A smile tugged at his lips. Oh, so you're worried about me, is that it? Don't worry. I can settle this. How? They really, really want this plot of land, but they don't have enough connections to get it. However, I do. I'll talk to them. They'll have two choices, either they get the plot of land, or they get my shares. The latter of which can't be liquefied. Don't worry, Eva. Euphoria welled within his eyes. Louis narrowed his eyes and approached her. But I'm happy you're concerned about me. She fixed her gaze on him. After a moment of staring at his face, she felt like she was being hit by a dizzy spell and 
could feel stars spinning around her. Even though she had seen many handsome actors in her career, they never made her heart race. Luli was the only one who had that effect on her. Let's go to my office. He got up and extended his hand. Eva held his hand and let him lead her to his office. There had been a rumor spreading around the company. It was about her going to marry Louis soon, and the fact that they were holding hands right at this moment just gave credence to this rumor. She didn't like coming to his office. One of the reasons was that she wanted to stay away from him. The other reason was that he was still her boss, and she would still feel intimidated by him. He handed her his cup. Here, use my cup. She took it and approached the French window to take in the view. I've never realized that the view here is so beautiful. All of a sudden, Louis hugged her from behind, and it made her stiffen up a little. I still can't get used to this show of affection, especially when we're not at home. My place tonight, he whispered into her ear. Eva mused over it for a moment before nodding. Sure. He heaved a sigh of relief. Finally. She's finally let go of the past, and we can now move forward. Despite their precautions, some fans still caught Julian and Jesse's trip to the amusement park on camera. They didn't disturb the couple, though they still posted the pictures online. Eventually, those photos had gone viral. Everyone who saw those images had only one thing that crossed their mind. This looks like something straight out of a romance. The guy was tall, muscular, and handsome, while the lady was petite and cute. Jessie's height only reached about Julian's neck. This was the perfect height difference, it was something that usually showed up in S and comics. I've always thought they'd make a cute couple. This proves it. Can't wait for their new show. I'm going to watch it. As soon as it comes out. Damn. Finally, some good FC King food. Loving this. Jessie saw the photo when she was scrolling through her phone. Even she was shocked at it. So, that's how we look. Together. My, am I always looking this slim? I never knew that. He's so tall, making me look like a damsel beside him. In any case, I'm going to save this pic. Can't help but love this pic so much. With that, she ended up making that picture her wallpaper. She was going to try out her bridesmaid gown that afternoon, and she wondered if Julian would show up. After having lunch, she and her family went to a high-end boutique. Everyone's attention was on Queenie. The old Manson couple had come with them. The two families came to try out the clothes they would wear during the wedding. Jessie was with her sister, who tried out the new gown she ordered. With some assistance from the retail assistant, she managed to change into it and emerged from the room for everyone to see. Chapter 1743, Coming of a Wedding. You look gorgeous in it, Queenie, Jessie praised. Really, I love this gown, too. Queenie nodded in approval. Okay, I'll go with this as my main gown, then. Queenie had too many choices to choose from, but in the end, she finally made her decision. Then, it was time for Jessie to try out her bridesmaid gown. She went with a violet dress made of fine gauze that showed her beauty. While maintaining a certain air of mystery about her, she looked great in that dress. Innocent and beautiful. She was admiring herself in the mirror when someone showed up behind her. At first, she thought it was her hallucination, but when she turned around, she was greeted by Julian. The guy had his hands in his pockets. He was looking at her with his gaze filled with approval and delight. How do I look? Jessie spun around sheepishly. The confidence she had earlier faltered when she stood before him. She always felt inadequate whenever she was around him. She felt insecure, fearing that he might think less of her. You look gorgeous. Stunning, even. He wasn't stingy with his praise. Her cheeks burned at his compliment. Then, she asked, have you tried your suit yet? Yes, I have. It was not bad, I think. A shame I didn't get to see it. She was slightly dejected for missing the chance to see him in his suit. You'll get to see it during the wedding. It's in three days. We're not in a rush. He smiled. Leave something for the imagination. Even without seeing it, Jesse knew Julian would look good in any shirt. However, that wasn't the only thing on her mind. She also wondered what he looked like without any clothes on. 
She blushed furiously upon thinking of that. The Silversteins and Mansons had dinner that night. Julian was there as well. The elders returned home after dinner while the kids went around town. Queenie, however, couldn't stay out for too long, so Nigel took her home. In the end, Julian and Jesse went on a little date. She showed him that photo and compared their height. Am I that short? She puffed her cheeks indignantly. Well, I have no complaints about it. He then pulled her into his embrace. You're my cup of tea, after all. And that made her feel better. The next morning, all the guests who had time to spare came to the island for some sightseeing as they waited for the wedding to begin. The press graves were already there. A little girl in a regal dress was running around on the grassy plains. Willow was already four, and she was as lively as a rabbit. No longer did she need anyone to hold her in their arms. She would much prefer to go around on her own. Behind her, her father and brother stood. She was giggling as she ran. Sometimes she would turn around to look at her family. A woman in a black dress was following her closely, and she glimmered like a gemstone under the sun. Mommy, mommy. The girl turned back and trotted up to her mother when she realized Anastasia wasn't following. Anastasia waited for her. When Willow came near, she hunkered down and picked the exhausted girl up. Willow might be small, but the length of her hair had already reached her shoulders, and it was thick enough to braid. All the guests looked at them enviously. What a happy family. The wedding, as stated, was held three days later. Romance filled the air, heralding the coming of a grand event. The Silversteins, who came two days earlier, rested for a day. Jessie and Queenie went around the island with their mother. Julian could only make it one day before the wedding because of his work. Chapter 1744 The Wedding Jessie and Queenie stayed with their parents while Nigel and his parents were welcoming the guests. They were too busy to do anything else for the moment. And then, the day of the wedding came. A blanket of fog draped over the ocean, lending an air of mystique to the island. However, the mist bade a silent farewell the moment dawn broke through the horizon. A layer of humidity hung in the air, dancing with the scent of flowers. It spruced up the emotions of everyone on the island. Jessie helped Queenie put her makeup on. She looked great after having a good night's sleep. Then, it was Jessie's turn to put on her makeup. Most of the guests had arrived, taking up all the villas on the island. In the villa where the pressgraves stayed, Anastasia picked her sleeping daughter up. Unlock your inner strength, mental health. Tips from Disney. New taste, weird things ready to be added. To your blender ASAP. Willow had a habit of sleeping in. She wouldn't sleep at night, that was why. However, this wedding was important. And Anastasia would not let her daughter be tardy. Willow's cheeks were chubby and soft, and her eyelashes were long and curly. Her lips were puffed up, and her skin was gleaming. Her hair was black and thick but was unkempt from sleep. Anastasia changed her into the pinkish-purple tutu and paired that up with a white shirt. She looked adorable, but the girl was still not awake. She was still lying on the couch while her mother did her hair. Eventually, Anastasia took her out of the room and gave her to Elliot. Once she was in the embrace of her father, the girl slept even better. Elliot couldn't resist kissing his daughter's cheek. Ever since Willow was born, he had changed a lot. He spoiled his daughter to no end, and she became the most important thing in his life. She was like a modern princess, loved by her whole family, and even her brother spoiled her as well. Her brother had never raised his voice around her or bullied her. In fact, she was the one who would play tricks on him now and then. It's almost 9 a.m. We need to go. Don't want to be late. Anastasia emerged from her room, wearing a dark blue dress for the wedding. She looked elegant and almost royal. Elliot didn't want to miss the wedding, either. He held up his daughter and emerged from the villa with his wife. Then, they got into a car and went to the church. Jessie had arrived at the church. She got out of the car and saw Julian talking beside the grassy plains. He was wearing a bow tie, looking handsome in it. He landed on the island late at night the night before, so she didn't have the chance to meet him until now. Now that she finally saw him, it filled her with delight. 
Dance your night away with the iconic women who defined music. New Muslim superheroes springing from the pages of comic books. She approached him, I'll be in the waiting room with Queenie. He nodded in acknowledgement. Sure, come back when you're done. Jesse then took Queenie to the waiting room. The Mansons were there as well, and Jesse's mother was present. 2. All right, I guess I can slack off a little. The wedding starts at 9.30 a.m. I have half an hour to spare. With that thought in mind, she descended the stairs and saw Julian waiting for her beside the grassy plain. Her dress billowed in the wind, and the sea breeze danced with her hair. Julian thought she looked just like a fairy who descended from her home in the skies. They strolled down the path of the garden. The groups of guests were having fun in the distance, and roses bloomed on both sides of the path, celebrating the wedding that was to come and the love that was blooming. The couple said nothing, but they could feel romance hanging around them. Jessie spaced out and found her heels stuck in the cracks of the rock path. She gasped as she lost her balance, and Julian pulled her into his embrace. She put her hands on his shoulders, her breathing labored. Then, their eyes met. Chapter 1745 Vows The love between them was almost palpable. There was no exchange between them, none was needed, as all was. Understood. After the wedding is over and after our show wraps up, let's also hold a wedding like this, all right? Julian spoke of the wish he had. Surprise glinted in Jessie's eyes. She wanted to have the kind of wedding her sister had as well, and now he was willing to give her just that. Sure, she nodded, anticipation filling her eyes. He looked at the time and pulled her up. We should go now. Don't wanna be late. Oh, right. Almost forgot. Her cheeks blushed. She held his hand and trotted all the way to the side door of the church. Julian let her pull him along to the church. It feels like we're running toward our happily ever after. They still had ten minutes left when they returned to the waiting room. Queenie looked at her sister and Julian, and she smiled as she thought, seems like she has found her happily ever after as well. A dark side of beauty salons not many people know about. These are 15 great style tips from Asian women. That's great. It's just like what I imagined. We're marrying men who are coincidentally good friends with each other. That'll strengthen our bond. Five minutes left, Miss Silverstein. Get ready. The makeup artists and their assistants were helping Queenie with her makeup while Jessie was holding her sister carefully. Julian, on the other hand, went to the groom's waiting room. The press graves were seated at the first table. Finally, Willow stretched her arms. She was woken up by the noise around her. Once she opened her eyes, the girl quickly sat up and held her father tightly. Elliot patted her shoulder and said, Calm down, sweetie. The girl was a brave one. She looked around, and her attention was immediately focused on the candies on the table. Right away, she took a bag of it and held it tightly like a rabbit worried about its food getting stolen. Anastasia saw that, and it amused her. She's safe in her father's hands, but she probably thinks someone will steal her candy anyway. She then turned her attention to Nigel, who looked dashing in his suit. She was reminded of her own wedding. It's been three years. Time flies. And then, it was time. The tune of wedding march echoed across the hall, and the gates swung open. One gorgeous bride stood outside, the sun gleaming down on her. She emerged from the beam of light like an angel, bearing happiness. Her bliss spread to all her guests, and even Willow was astounded by her beauty. She leaned on the table and stared at the lady who just came in. Her extra pounds were making her more successful. Seven Netflix shows cancelled because they don't get the ratings. Queenie held her father's arm as she slowly marched toward the stage. Jessie followed behind them. Queenie's Face was covered with a veil, but everyone could still see how beautiful she was. The bride's gorgeous. Indeed. The Mansons are so lucky. Brenda was crying tears of joy as well. They're finally getting married. Now, I can rest easy. After Queenie ascended the stage, Nigel extended his hand to hold her. She's pregnant. Can't let anything happen. To her. Brandon teared up and handed his daughter's hand to Nigel. He then patted Nigel's hand. Take good care. 
of her, Nigel. Nigel gave Brandon a look of determination. Yes, father, I will love her and protect her all my life. That is good enough for me. With that, Brandon left the stage. He wanted nothing more than for his daughter to marry a good man. All he wanted was for her to live a peaceful life. Queenie teared up as well. Even after she was married, she would make it a point to visit her parents often. She wouldn't want them to feel lonely. For some reason, Jesse had the same thought as well. After I get married, I'll also make sure to visit dad and mom. As much as I can. I don't want them to feel sad. I need to spend more time with them. Chapter 1746 He's Drunk Julian noticed Jesse wiping her tears away, and he gave her an understanding look. If they weren't in a church, he would have hugged her. The priest came forth and officiated the wedding. Eventually, the couple on stage exchanged their vows and hugged passionately. All the guests gave them thunderous applause. Queenie didn't toss her bouquet. Instead, she turned around and gave it to Jesse. Jesse blushed, but she took it. Happily anyway. Thank you for the blessing, Queenie. Jonathan made a speech to give the newlyweds all his blessings and hopes. The banquet began, and the guests were served lavish, beautiful dishes. Willow had a great time eating them. The girl sat in a high chair and let her parents feed her. At the same time, she kept holding on to her candies. Jared had grown into a handsome and dashing young boy. He stopped acting cute like how he used to. Now, he was more collected and mature. Once he was done eating, he took his sister away, leaving their parents alone so they could eat in peace. Queenie switched into a dress proper for the banquet, and Jesse changed into a shorter dress as well. She and Julian accompanied the newlyweds as they went around raising toasts to everyone. Queenie was a bit tired after all the toasting, so Jesse took her back to the waiting room. Nigel came in a while. Later with a drunk Julian tagging along behind him. He drank a lot. Most of those were supposed to be toasts for. Nigel. Jesse, leave Queenie to me. You should take Julian back to his villa. He needs to rest. Look at him. He's drunk. Jesse nodded. Want me to hold you up? She asked Julian. I can still walk, he answered stubbornly, but the look on his face spoke otherwise. His fair-skinned face had a rosy hue to them, and she felt like biting him. They came to the corridor and made their way to the elevator. Then, he almost tripped over himself. She held him up. Let me help. Just then, Julian leaned down, and their faces were millimeters away. Jesse's cheeks were set aflame. The moment the elevator opened, she dragged him into it. A driver was tasked to take them back. She told him where Julian stayed, and the driver took them all the way. There, she was already huffing and puffing when she painstakingly took Julian back home. He was nearly six feet. Two, and his size alone made it tough for her to drag him along. She wanted to let go of him the moment he hit the couch, but all of a sudden, he wrapped his arms around her and pulled her down. Caught by surprise, she fell into his embrace, and her heart skipped a beat. She raised her head, only to be met by a pair of passionate eyes. Even without asking, she knew what he had in his mind. Stay with me, said Julian hoarsely. I I need to go back. But Nigel told you to take care of me. H how should I go about that? Jesse stammered. I can't take care of you while locked in your arms. Just let me hug you for a while. With that, he held her tightly, refusing to let go. Quietly, she leaned on his chest. Silence swooped down on them, but her heart was still beating violently against her ribcage. This is my sister's wedding. I can't believe I'm making out with him here. A moment later, she thought. Julian might need some water, so she said, I'll get you some water. Sure, he replied. However, for some reason, Jesse's hair was tangled with his belt. A pang of pain shot through her head the moment she stood up, and she gasped. Immediately, she fell back to him once more. My hair got tangled. After saying that, she tried to untangle her hair from his belt. Chapter 1747 Making Out Unbeknownst to her, Julian tensed up. Hoarsely, he asked, done. Not yet. Little did Jesse know that she was dangerously close to making him snap. The alcohol was already fuzzing his mind in the first place, and what she 
was doing now made things worse. She kept touching his belt and entangling her hair. When she was done, Julian looked redder than a cooked lobster. And his throat was parched. She got him a glass of water, and he gulped it down in one go. He then asked for another glass, and she poured another for him. Only then did he feel the fire within him die down a little. She put the cup down. I should take you upstairs. You need to rest. He narrowed his eyes. Sure. She took him upstairs. The alcohol was wearing off a bit, and his steps had more strength to them now. They entered his room, and Jesse noticed the curtains were open. Without much thought, she went over to draw the curtains, and the room went dim. Yet, Julian could still see the silhouette of her figure even with such poor lighting. Right then, he couldn't take it anymore. All he wanted was to rail her. He pulled her into his embrace, and when she turned around, he pressed his lips against hers. Time stopped for a moment for Jessie, her eyes widening with shock. However, she couldn't resist the kiss, not from him. Slivers of sunshine slipped into the room, lending it an element of warmth. With a voice barely counting as a whisper, he asked, Can I do you? She remained silent as she was overwhelmed with embarrassment. How do you expect me to answer that? Well, I'd say yes, but I'm a lady. I need to keep up appearances, she thought to herself. She wanted him to do her, but she lacked the courage to ask him so. Before she could say anything, Julian pressed on deeper with his kiss, his hand, touching her supple lower back. At that point, Jessie surrendered herself to him, letting him take her for a ride. For a moment there, she forgot her sister's wedding was still ongoing. Jessie could taste the taste of alcohol in her mouth. It came from Julian. Every breath he exhaled was filled with his almost scalding warmth. The alcohol still lingered in his system, so he spoke in a way that was out of his usual character, Oh, you feel hot. Did you have too much to drink as well? No, I am hot because you're making me hot and bothered. And no, I didn't, she stammered. Just then, his phone rang, and she pushed him quickly. Hey, someone's calling. You. However, he didn't stop kissing. He huffed, ignore it. It's nothing important. Unfortunately for him, the phone wouldn't stop ringing. The only way to make it stop was for him to take the call. It must be important, or else it would have stopped ringing by now. You should take the call. She shoved him away, huffing and puffing. If it's important and he misses it, it'd be bad. Julian stared at the phone with hatred and fury in his eyes. For a moment, he was seized by the urge to toss it out. The window. Damn it. This has better be important, or else, he eyed the caller ID for a moment and took the call. Impatiently. What is it? Young Master Julian, someone just informed us your car got scratched, Ashley said, apparently panicking. God damn it. Next time, you settle this yourself. You call me because of something inconsequential like that again. And I'll cut your pay. He roared and tossed his phone away after hanging up. Jesse blinked. Oh, was that Ashley? No, I can't let him cut her pay. She's a nice lady. She approached him and wrapped her arms around him. Softly, she consoled, all right, calm down now. Chapter 1748 Parenting Julian sobered up a little just then as he was afraid that he might have frightened her with his shouting just now. He pressed his forehead against hers. Did I scare you? What? The fact that you kissed me, or the fact you yelled at Ashley? Jesse smiled. A chuckle escaped his lips. This is all your fault. How is that my fault? She blinked innocently. You kissed me, and that's supposed to be my fault. How? Because. You're too pretty. I couldn't hold myself back. You're not cutting her pay. She's a hard-working assistant, all right. Jesse said solemnly. Julian gulped slightly at her. Serious tone. Fine, I won't cut her pay. She heaved a sigh of relief upon hearing that. Get some sleep. All head. Back and see if they need my help. I almost crossed the line. If Ashley hadn't called me, I might have left a bad impression on Jessie. Darn, I shouldn't. Have treated the first time so rashly. I don't want her to remember her first time as some sloppy sex during. Someone else's wedding, after all. He nodded after snapping out of his thoughts. Sure, I'm fine now. 
you should head over and help them. Once Jesse was gone, he lay on the bed and called Ashley, who was still shocked after the call. Young master. Julian, don't worry, I won't cut your pay. Orville can deal with the car problem. I see. Did I interrupt something, sir? Her guess was correct. What are you talking about? He snapped. You were. With Miss Jessie, weren't you? Julian was speechless. She knows me well, huh? He snorted. If you ask one more stupid question, you're not. Getting paid this month. Quickly, Ashley said, please, no, sir. Pretend I said nothing. You two have fun. He hung up soon after. His mind was still replaying the scene of the earlier kiss, which sobered him up completely. Jessie returned to the ballroom, still looking red. Though, she composed herself once she got inside. However, she would still feel a little embarrassed every time she was reminded of that kiss. Queenie was enjoying her desserts when Jessie entered the waiting room. Jessie, Queenie invited her to share the sweet stuff. Come, I need someone to help me out with these. Jessie obliged. She sat down and enjoyed the desserts as well. Eating desserts is the happiest thing to do, she thought. Everyone else was in the ballroom, chatting the hours away. Jared and Willow were playing on the field outside with a group of bodyguards keeping an eye on them. Birdie, Willow could make out some simple words now. She pointed at the birds flying overhead as she spun. Around in delight, Jared crouched down beside her, smiling. Do you like them? The girl nodded, grinning toothily. A gentle breeze whispered across the fields, and her hair clasped her chubby cheeks. It was an adorable sight to behold. Anastasia came out a while later and watched her kids play. They were her whole world. Now, she no longer wanted to expand her company. It was big enough and was running well. Because of that, she now had more time with her family. Mommy. Willow ran toward her the moment she saw Anastasia. She waddled like a little duckling as she ran. And then, she fell. Jared tried to pull her up, but Anastasia stopped him. Willow expected her brother or mother to come over and pick her up, but she realized Anastasia was looking somewhere else while Jared wasn't coming. Either, she puckered her lips and got back up herself, feeling a little miffed. However, that feeling went away with the wind. The girl clapped her hands and bravely went to her mother once again. Anastasia pretended she just saw Willow. She picked the girl up and kissed her cheek. Well done, Willow. Chapter 1749 On the Beach The girl raised her hands. With the best effort she could muster, she tried her best to recount how much the grass had hurt her hand, trying her best to get her mother's consolation. Oh, did you hurt your hands? Here, I'll blow on it for you. Anastasia blew the girl's chubby hands and kissed them. Finally, the girl cracked a happy smile, and her slight grievance was finally sent off to the sea. The island felt particularly languid in the afternoon. Clear blue skies and vast calm seas. Lots of the guests took the chance to have fun in the ocean. The older guests took a nap and prepared for the wedding dinner. Queenie wanted to play as well, but she was in no condition for that. The first trimester was one of suffering as she couldn't eat or sleep well, things were hard on her. Nevertheless, she told Jessie to seize the chance to have fun. It wasn't every day she had a vacation, so she should make the most out of it. Get Julian. He can go with you. Dad. And Mom are chatting with their friends as well. That was what Queenie told her. Jessie was in a sprightly mood. Sleeping was the last thing on her mind, she wanted to have fun. The moment. Julian got her call, he came to see her. They took a stroll through the area with coconut trees before emerging on the beach. Since everyone was far away from them, they had the whole beach to themselves. Jessie gasped in. Surprise and charged to the beach like a happy child. Gilmore, you have to come down here. She called his last name by accident. The girl was too happy to notice that. Oh, I never did tell her how to address me. Guess that's why she thinks she can call me whatever she wants. I need to change that. He followed her onto the beach. Then, he crossed his arms and narrowed his eyes. What did you just call me? Asked Julian. Sheepishly, she said, sorry, I was a little too excited. She never called him by his last name. Most of the time, it 
would just be, Mr. Gilmore. From now on, you're calling me Julian, he said imperiously. But I think Mr. Gilmore sounds good, too. No, you're calling me Julian. Proudly, Jessie nodded. Okay, Julian. Julian patted her head. Good. From now on, you're calling me that. Oh, he can be so bossy about everything when he wants. She nodded in acknowledgement. Then, she scooped up some seawater. Wow, it's not cold at all. It feels warm. Do you want to swim? She blinked. Can I? As long as you want it. Julian nodded. She was in a short dress, and they had no swimsuits lying around. Awkwardly, she said, I'll do it later. She returned to the beach and had all the fun she wanted. She frolicked around and kept kicking the waters. Eventually, she lost her footing and fell. Right away, she backed away and plopped onto the sand. Well, this is super awkward. Oh, no, I got sand all over me. Wash yourself in the waters, then, Julian suggested. Something twinkled in his eyes, and he gulped slightly. He thought she looked alluring when she was drenched. Jessie took that advice and slowly stepped into the sea. She stopped when the seawater got to her waist level. Then, she let it wash the sand on her body away. When she came back up, her dress was already sticking to her, accentuating her legs. We should go back now. I need to get changed. She's not wearing any shoes. Julian made a mental note to himself before crouching down. Get up. I'll take you back on my back. She held her heels and let him take her back to the villa. Chapter 1750 A Nice Stroll It was a peaceful stroll. The sun was shining, the birds were chirping. Jessie was leaning on Julian's back, feeling safe. They ran into a few waitresses and were recognized immediately. Oh my gosh. The waitress gasped. It's them. They look so good together. He's taking her on his back. I envy her. Jessie thought it was a bit daunting for Julian since he had to take her back to the villas. They were a few hundred yards away. However, instead of taking her back to her villa, Julian took her to his. She asked Lexi to get her a set of clothes. She was staying in the same villa as her parents, and she didn't want them to see the state she was in right now. That's why she asked for Lexi's help. I'll use your bathroom for a bit. Julian. She took her clothes and headed for the bathroom. Sure, he replied in acknowledgement. She wondered why he wasn't looking at her. Why is he looking away? In all honesty, he wanted to look at her. However, she would notice the desire in his eyes if he did. Jesse entered the master bedroom. Julian realized his phone was dead, so he went upstairs to get the charger, and it was then he heard Jesse showering in the bathroom. A current of electricity coursed through his body, and he took a seat on the couch, waiting for her. Then, he noticed something interesting. She forgot to take her clothes. Oh, does that mean I get to see something nice, then? She only realized she had forgotten her clothes after she was done showering. Oh, God. But thank goodness that. Julian's downstairs. He's not here, so there's nothing to worry about. She covered herself with a towel and darted. Out of the bathroom. The moment she turned the corner, she saw Julian on the couch, and her clothes were right. Beside him. She exclaimed in her mind, holy moly. I thought he was downstairs. Why is he here? I I need to take my clothes. She held her towel tightly, worried it might slip. He stared right at her, enjoying the beautiful sight in front of him. He picked her clothes up and handed them to her. Thinking he was just being nice, she happily took the clothes, but... Then he suddenly held her hand and pulled her into his embrace. She caught a whiff of his scent and felt everything. Around her spin a little. Didn't know he could be so cheeky. Julian, she started, though she never got to finish. That sentence. He held the back of her head and pressed his lips against hers. She's so charming. I'd love to gobble her up right. Now, this is killing me. Jessie was holding her towel with both hands, which made things easier for him. She can't even push me now. Julian didn't push her any further, though. Once he had enough, he picked up his phone and charger. I'll be waiting. Downstairs. Even at night, the island glimmered and shimmered beautifully. The lighthouse and neon lights glowed the landmass up. The wedding dinner was a merry event as well. 
everyone gathered and feasted with their friends. Some drank with their friends on the field outside. The guests who had families stayed with their families, while the younger people took this chance to date a little. Nigel and Queenie were talking to the elders while Jessie had run off. She wasn't someone who could sit still. Naturally, she went straight to the place of her lover. He was waiting for her at the corner where it was dimly lit. She trotted over to him like a little fairy who couldn't wait to date her lover. Her hair billowed in the air, her dress, dancing with the breeze. Eventually, they met, and she tilted her head. Adorably, she asked, guess what I got? You. Chapter 1751 A Date. What is it? Julian narrowed his eyes. Ah, just take a guess. Fine. Candies, he said. Jessie's nose scrunched. Up. How did you get that right on the first try? She thumped his chest lightly. He burst into laughter. That was just a random guess. He never expected to hit the mark, but he did. He pulled her into his embrace and kissed her cheek. All right, I'm sorry. Shouldn't have guessed it. He's so sweet. She loved that he was apologizing for something this trivial, it meant he cared about her feelings. He pushed her head closer to his chest, and she leaned into his embrace, enjoying the scent of flowers brought in by the gentle breeze. So, this is what bliss feels like. Jessie sighed. We can see the Milky Way from here, and there's the moon up there. It feels like I'm in a painting. Bliss, at least to Julian, was to have whatever he loved. He caressed her hair softly. Yeah, and I'm feeling blessed to have you beside me, too. Right then, someone on the boat out on the ocean started the fireworks. A delighted Jesse hugged him tightly. The fireworks are starting. He happily wrapped his arm around her and watched the fireworks show with her. It went on for half an hour, and most of the fireworks would create different shapes and patterns after they went off. Eventually, they got tired. From standing up for too long, Sir Julian took her to an open-air coffee shop to continue watching. He could watch the fireworks, have a cup of coffee, and date the woman he loved. A candle burned before them, and roses surrounded the table. What bliss! On the other side of the field, Willow was riding on her father's back, watching the fireworks happily. She would start to gurgle from time to time. Anastasia, on the other hand, leaned on her son. He's grown so tall. I'm so proud of him. The newlyweds were also enjoying the fireworks. Queenie rested her head on Nigel's shoulder. We're married now. He's the one I'm spending my whole life with. Eventually, the fireworks came to an end, but everyone wanted more. Yet, that was not to be. It was getting late. And the older guests needed their rest. The young ones, however, could stay up and have more fun. Jessie wondered where Julian was taking her. Eventually, they came to the port, and a yacht was waiting on the sea. She froze for a few moments. Oh, right. He did say we were going out to the sea. They got onto the yacht and sped toward the moon hanging over the horizon. Eventually, they came to a stop in the middle of the ocean. The couple had some wine and enjoyed the view of the sea. Just the sight of it carried all their worries away, washing them into the depths of the ocean. Julian held Jesse in his embrace. Do you like this? She nodded in approval. I love it. He kissed her ear, and it triggered something in her. She turned around and held his face before leaning in and kissing him. It was a deep, passionate, and beautiful kiss. Even the air had turned hot and heavy from the intensity of their kiss. However, they pressed on. It wasn't until Jessie felt herself perspiring did she let Julian go. Julian was sweating as well, but he couldn't help but tease, what's wrong? You're sweating. It's hot. She fanned herself with her hand. Don't you feel anything? He felt it, all right. Everything inside him was screaming and begging him to give them some release. We should have some water. He entered the cabin and got her a glass of warm water while he gulped down a bottle of cold water. Wow, he's gulping it down. As she was worried, she said, slow down. You're going to catch a cold at this rate. He choked on himself and coughed. Awkwardly, he asked, how did you know I was down with a cold last time? Because I drank too much cold stuff. Chapter 1752 Negotiation. That's not the only reason. You took an ice cold shower, too, didn't you? Jesse smirked. 
I'm not a kid, you know. I'm an adult now. I know a lot of stuff. Julian kept quiet for a few moments before he broke into a smile. So, you know everything, I take it. She cocked. Her eyebrow, of course. Without shame, he asked, so, tell me, why did I take the cold shower? Her cheeks lit up when she heard his question. She bit her lip and hung her head low sheepishly. You can't expect me to go into detail. If you're not saying, then we might need to be a bit more hands-on with our approach. He wiggled his eyebrows. If there were a hole somewhere, Jessie would have buried herself in it. I can't believe they call this guy innocent. His fans think he's an honest-to-goodness saint and that he's not interested in anything lewd. If only they could see the current him. If she had the chance, she would tell the fans they got it all wrong. He's a perv, through and through. And he even knows how to talk dirty. Perv. She clicked her tongue, but in all honesty, she loved this. Julian's fans would have killed to have a chance to date him, yet all Julian cared about was Jessie. All he wanted to do was flirt with her, make out with her, and eventually gobble her all up like she was a nice little meal. He stopped teasing her after that, and she asked him to take some pictures. This was the couple's privilege. He would do anything to take the best pictures of her. A few hundred photos later, Jessie found herself going through each and every one of the photos, smiling at the sight of them. And then, it was her turn to take his photos. He was handsome, and the shadows hung over his eyes, making his eyelashes look longer than usual. He's so hot. It was already 2 a.m. when they came back. A drizzle fell, covering the island in a layer of humidity. They got into a car and headed to her villa. Since Jessie was staying with her parents, she couldn't make out with Julian too much, and she went to her room. Soon after, still, it was a memorable night. Many years down the road, she would remember this night, and it would make her smile. Back in Averna, Eva fell asleep in Louis's arms. Louis was still awake, and his eyes trained on her. He refused to shift his gaze, for she was his whole world. Wonder whom our first child will take after. But I bet they'll be cute. A smile curled his lips, and he pecked her cheek before he finally fell asleep. The couples were fast asleep, but there was someone who was still wide awake. The lights in Lucy's room were still on. She was on her couch, holding a magazine and staring at the photo of a certain man. It was one of the rare shots anyone had of Louis. In that photo, he was sitting on a regal couch with his legs crossed. He gleamed like the most beautiful diamond in the world, and his eyes shone like obsidian. Behind those eyes resided the wisdom of Solomon. She was addicted to him as a junkie would toward substances. She had seen this photo countless times, yet she didn't find the photo any less appealing. If she could, she would have married Louis right away. Yet, he's sleeping with another woman right now. Most women would kill to sleep with him. And now, I have an arrangement that can legally make me his wife. I'm not going to let this chance slip by. Lucy's father told her that Louis had control of that plot of land their family wanted to invest in. Louis had proposed an exchange. The arranged marriage's cancellation for his plot of land. It was an enticing offer, and her father brought it up with her. He would like to see what she thought of it. Chapter 1753 Scheme. However, she wouldn't agree to it. Lucy couldn't care less about that plot of land, not when her marriage was at stake. She would never let her father agree to the deal, and Louis was someone who cared for nothing but profit, or so she thought. I know him. Everything he does, he does for profit. He only likes Eva for her looks. If she loses that, he won't stay with her anymore. When it comes to that, he'll never let go of his shares for a woman who has lost the only trait he likes. Maybe he'll agree to the marriage then, and I can finally be his wife. Staying with him forever, I might get to enjoy all the perks of marrying him. She looked at his photo once more, the sight of it stoking the flames of desire within her. Just a look at his photo was enough to make her shiver. I won't let anyone else take you, she muttered. Most of the guests were already leaving the day after the wedding. The press graves were among them. It had been four days since they came to the island, and Jared had school to attend. 
Nigel and Queenie sent them off after breakfast. Before they parted ways, Anastasia told Queenie to call if she needed anything. Anastasia was a mother of two. She knew how to handle most problems that would arise during pregnancy. Of course, Anastasia, Queenie said gently. We're a family now. You and Nigel should come and visit us when you have time. Nigel was playing with Willow. The girl even kissed him, much to his delight. Oh, we'll visit you a lot, he said. He then looked at Jared. Whoa, Jared's tall now. Bet he'll be six feet tall in a few years. Time flies, huh? Jared held Nigel's hand and looked at him with anticipation in his eyes. Can I have your gaming system, Uncle Nigel? You won't give up until I say yes, huh? Fine, you can take it. Nigel's focus was on his wife now. He lost interest in games, so Jared could have his gaming gear. Anastasia said, it's fine to play games, but remember not to neglect your studies, Jared. Elliot didn't mind Jared playing games. He was confident his boy had enough discipline to control himself. And this is good for discipline training. Get ready to feel the nostalgia, back to the future stars reunite. Looking at her photos, Brian Austin Green confirmed what was suspected all along. Disney movies offer some value. Don't worry, mom. Two hours on the weekend. That's all. The newlyweds saw them off and returned to their villa. They were going to stay for a few more days. It was a nice place. Fresh air and a quiet environment. It was a perfect place for a pregnant woman. Eventually, Julian and Jesse had to leave as well. They, too, had work to do. After saying their goodbyes, they hopped onto the helicopter and enjoyed the sea view as the chopper flew across the air. It was 3 p.m. when they returned to Averna. Julian asked Louie and Eve out for dinner, and Jesse went with him. Her parents were still on the island, so she had the freedom to do whatever she wanted. Why don't you stay at my place tonight? Julian suggested. She nodded. If you want me to, then sure. Of course, I want you. He chuckled. I'd love for you to stay. Not up to anything cheeky, I hope. She could see right through him. Nope. He denied, not like you can do anything about it once we get home. Jesse shrugged it off. Eva had called her, inviting her over for dinner. The Gilmore brothers met up at 6 p.m., bringing their partners along. This meeting was a cheery one, and the ladies became good friends. It was only a matter of time before they became family. Chapter 1754 A Tour Around His House That fact was not lost on the Gilmore brothers, either. They took great care of the ladies throughout dinner. And then, they parted ways at 8.30 p.m. Jesse followed Julian home, and Lexi had already made sure Jesse's suitcase was sent to the house. Before she left, Lexi inched closer to Jesse's ear and whispered, Hey, Jesse, I got you two sets of pajamas. Make sure to use them tonight. Wait, what? Jesse was confused for a second before she was reminded of the days she spent with Lexi. Lexi's kind of a perv, too. But I'm not. I might be able to talk dirty, but I'm not one for actions. Jesse had seen Julian's house once. She thought his house's decor was simple, stylish, and manly. She loved it. The simplicity caught her attention, and the French window was set at the one place where they could see the best of. Averna, while she was enjoying the view, Julian handed her a glass of water. Here, have a glass of water. She took it and asked sheepishly, so, where am I going to sleep tonight? I have one master bedroom and five guest rooms. Make your pick, he said. She pursed her lips as she mused over her choice, but then he smirked. The master bedroom is on the list as well, you know. His comment made her blush. I'm not going to sleep in the same room as you. Make your pick, then, said Julian. Jesse then went around his house. It was a duplex measuring about a thousand square meters. She went upstairs and looked outside the French window. The view is so beautiful here. She looked around the bedrooms and kept walking down until she came to a bedroom decked out with a suite and a mini living space. Curious, she entered the room and had a look. And then, she entered the closet room. Glass cabinet stood inside, which held nothing but men's suits. Also, she saw a watch inside. This can't be the master bedroom, can it? She blinked. 
someone opened the door, and it made her leap with a start. Julian was holding his jacket. He noticed her in his bedroom, and he chuckled. So, you've made your choice, I see. This is your bedroom. Jesse felt a bit awkward. His house is big. Too big. Yes. He nodded in affirmative. Sheepishly, she said, no, I was just looking around. Not going to take your room. She didn't leave right away. Though, she went around for another look. The room was painted gray, and the French window in his room almost showed the full scenery of Averna. Our taste in aesthetics matches. Gosh, you have a beautiful house, she praised. You can stay for a bit if you want, he purred. Jesse would love that, really. She turned around to look at him. Yeah, we don't have to go back to work right away. Stay around and have fun. A smile tugged at his lips. If this were a cartoon show, the shadow of Julian would have a tail slowly swaying behind him. He looked like a wolf trying to trick Little Red Riding Hood into getting eaten. Sure, she wanted to stay at his home as well. It'd be a blast. She kept looking around his house, and Julian followed. Eventually, she came to the cinema room. God, I must watch a movie here. Anticipation filled her heart as she made a mental note to herself. A tour around the house showed her a gym room, a kitchen on the second floor, and there was even a bar counter. Finally, Jessie picked the bedroom closest to Julian's, and Julian came back with her suitcase. When she realized it was already 11 p.m., she said, you must be tired. Get some rest. Chapter 1755 Sexy Pajamas. Holler at me if you need anything. A smile curled Julian's lips, and he left. I am not going to holler at you. Jessie opened her suitcase, and the first thing she saw was the sets of pajamas Lexi had prepared for her. One was pink, while the other was purple, and both were almost transparent. She held them up, thinking, can you even call these pajamas? Wonder where she got these. Jessie wanted to take a shower, but she couldn't find her normal pajamas. Lexi. Jessie gasped. Why did you take my normal pajamas away? What are you doing? Oh my god. Are these the only PJs I have now? Man, I might have to hire another assistant. Darn you, Lexi. I bet she's laughing her socks off right now. Jessie wanted to scream, but she had no choice. In the end, she picked the purple lace pajamas. At least it looked slightly more modest compared to the pink one. She finished showering and came out wearing the purple silk nightdress. She felt shy, but she thought the nightdress showed off her curves perfectly. Good thing I'm alone here. It'd be embarrassing if someone else were here. Hum, it's really quiet, though. Something's missing. Oh, right. My phone. She was used to the sounds of text notifications coming from her phone, but that was missing right now. It was then she realized her phone was in the living room. Should I go out right now? I'm in a nightdress. I wonder if Julian's in his room. Jesse was having an internal struggle. Hum, but it's already late. He must be in his room by now. She opened the door slightly to take a look, but before she could even look around, she saw Julian standing before her door. He was wearing a black silk robe, and in his hand was her bag. Apparently, he was planning on giving her bag back. Jessie took a deep breath, wondering which part of her she should cover. Julian was staring in earnest as well. Oh, that's a nice night dress. Just what I like. In the end, she thought she should cover her chest, so she put an arm over her breasts. Shyly, she said, can I have my bag? Julian handed the bag over to her. Here you go. Jessie kept her eyes on the bag, ready to dart out of her room to take it and dart back in right away, but just as she grabbed the bag, Julian tugged on it and pulled her into his embrace. Oh gosh, I fell for it. However, she didn't mind. She was fine with getting tricked as long as the trickster was Julian. She closed her eyes, leaning on his chest. So, naughty, she whispered. Julian placed the bag on her chest and carried her in his arms. The main bedroom is big enough for the two of us. You can sleep there. That's sure, Jessie stammered. She was willing to share a room with him. After all, he was her lover, and lovers were supposed to share the same bed. 
Besides, Queenie's going to be a mother soon, and I'm going to be 25 in November. I should start thinking about raising a family now. Moreover, my boyfriend is the man of my dreams, she told herself. Jessie caught a whiff of his scent and prepared herself. Anything that happens tonight, happens. She finally accepted her fate and leaned cozily in his embrace. Julian put her down on the bed gently, and a smile tugged at his lips. Sleep. Chapter 1756 Calculated Accident. Wait. You're staying up. Yeah. I can't sleep, so I texted a few friends. We're going to play some video games. Julian chuckled. Jesse sat up and held his arm. I'm more important than your games. You're not leaving. Huh. Julian just wanted an excuse to leave. If he stayed around for any longer, he might let his inner beast loose. So, you want me to stay? Hoarsely, he asked, you do know what that means, right? Jessie pursed her lips. It embarrassed her to say this, but still, she mustered the courage to speak. I know, I'm not a kid anymore. Julian gulped. He leaned down and held her hands above her head. You won't regret this. I won't. She stared right back at him. I won't regret this. Why are you doing this? He asked huskily. Because of love. I don't want to force her. I I don't want you to come down with another cold. Enough with the cold water and shower. That was the only excuse she could come up with at the time. Fashion brands, designers take a stand against Russia's invasion. Eight crazy gifts that celebrities have given their better halves. But that was enough for Julian, enough for him to see that she loved him. He turned the night lights off, plunging the room into darkness. The only sources of light came from the moon and the twinkling stars outside. The air was turning hot and heavy at a blistering rate, and the only sound that pierced through the air was Julian's labored breathing. It felt like his breath was made of fire. Dawn came. Rays of sunshine filtered through the window and into the room, shining on the couple who were sleeping in each other's embrace on the gray bed. Julian's chin rested on Jessie's forehead, while she rested her head against his chest, his arm acting as her pillow. The look on her face spoke of satisfaction, while her nightdress lay on the ground in tatters. Bad quality, perhaps. Julian woke up first, still in disbelief. What happened the night before was insane, and now Jesse was finally, truly, his. A sense of responsibility filled him. He knew he had one more thing to protect now. He kissed her forehead. Gently as if leaving his imprint on her. The kiss woke Jesse up, and her eyelashes fluttered as she did. She stared at Julian like an innocent doe, then she. Buried her face in his chest. You weren't this shy last night, he chuckled. But it's broad daylight now. I can't do as I please, not when it's not dark. Want to get up? Nah, I want to lie in your bed and sleep in until noon. Jesse was still exhausted. Julian drew the curtains shut, keeping the rays of sunshine out, and they went back to sleep. Six former child actors who committed crimes. As they got older. Seven iconic pies from TV shows and movies. Eva woke up early in her apartment. There wasn't much work to do lately, so she asked a senior of hers out for tea. That veteran helped her out once, so Eva got her a gift. Eva had a good reputation in the industry thanks to how she treated people. She would remember all the favors everyone had done for her, and once she made it big, she would return them. The clock struck two, and Eva left her home. She descended to the underground car park and got in her car, then left the complex. The moment her car left the car park, a black off-road vehicle with sturdy steel bars installed at the front tailed her. The driver of the off-road vehicle made a call to someone. Tailing her right now. Good. Do as I say, and you'll get paid handsomely. I got it, the man answered. This is my job, after all. Little did Eva know that she was tailed. It was to be expected since most people wouldn't be this paranoid. She made her way to the restaurant and stopped in front of a red light in a slightly remote area. It was then the off-road. Vehicle sped up and slammed into Eva's car. Chapter 1757 Extortion. Eva's car flipped over and rolled twice before coming to a stop. She was hanging from her seat, unconscious. Her 
Hair tumbled down to the car's base while blood trickled down her forehead that was slammed into the steering wheel. The man hopped out of his car and approached Eva, a knife in his hand. He hadn't been ordered to kill Eva. Instead, he was told to knock her out and slash her face. Indeed, he had received orders to disfigure her. Eva had no idea danger was closing in and that her beauty was in jeopardy. Fortunately, her guardian angels were looking out for her. A fire truck zipped by just in time. They had just returned from a firefighting mission and ran into this unfortunate event. A few firemen hopped off the truck, and the criminal tucked his knife away. He then put on a look of worry. Quick. Save her. The bonnet of Eva's car had oil leaking through it, and smoke billowed in the air. First, the firemen rescued Eva. From the car, then they put out the smoke. Eva was then taken to the nearest hospital. At the same time, the criminal returned to his car and made a call. I failed. I could have done it, but some firemen showed up. She escaped with nothing but a wound on her forehead. What? I specifically told you to cut her face up. A forehead wound won't do anything. I couldn't do anything. There were firemen around. I'm in trouble now. I need to settle it, so pay up. Fine, but only a third of the money. We agreed to that, remember? Full sum only on job completion. What? I almost killed someone because of you. I have the cash ready. Come and take it, Lucy hissed. She wouldn't pay full price unless the job was completed. The criminal sped off to meet Lucy. At the same time, Eva was in the hospital for treatment. Half an hour later, the man came to the meeting spot where a red sports car stood. Before he got out of the car, he whipped out a knife and hid it behind his back. Lucy had just arrived not too long ago. She had the full sum in cash, but now she had to split it into three parts. Lucy opened up her trunk, and the sight of cash caused the criminal to be crazy. Stupidly enough, Lucy said, you're only getting a third of this. She then proceeded to take the money. However, the man held a knife against her throat. I want all of it. No way. Lucy needed money as well. She had gone to lengths just to withdraw all the money she had for this sabotage. He failed, yet he expects to get all the money from me. She wouldn't agree to it, obviously, but she did. Another stupid thing. She fought back. Lucy kicked the man, and it made him snap. His greed took over, and he slit. Her neck open. Blood spurted from her wound, and Lucy fell to the ground. The man promptly took all the money and hurried back. To his car. I have to get out of here. Then he escaped. A couple was just walking by. The girl was holding her boyfriend's arm, and when she noticed Lucy, she screamed. It made her boyfriend jolt. When he saw Lucy lying in a pool of blood, he too lost his cool, but he quickly whipped out his phone and, with trembling hands, called 911. The cops arrived first. It didn't take long for them to identify who the victim was. Her ID and driver's license were in her bag, after all. Lucy's father got a call soon enough, and it was the bearer of bad news. His daughter had died. What? Who are? You. Are you trying to make me angry? Because you're doing a great job right now. My daughter's fine. Chapter 1758 Tragedy. I am a cop, Cornelius. This is not a joke. I need you to come here right now. Not too long after the cops called the Constantines, the ambulance arrived. There was no need for the doctors to do anything, however. Lucis' artery had been cut and she had bled to death. At the same time, another lady was also in the ER, Eva. Eva's parents had divorced. Her father died while her mother remarried a foreigner, hence the cops called her manager to let her know what was going on. Sarah was in disbelief, but then she called Louis. Louis set aside all his work immediately and sped to the hospital. Louis tried to barge into the emergency room, but a nurse stopped him. Sir, the patient is still under medical attention. Please, wait outside. Do not disturb the doctors. Louis's heart sank. She was fine this morning. What happened? Why is she hurt? What happened? Why did she go out all by herself? Did you find the perpetrator? Sarah was worried as well. She shook her head. I came as soon as I got the cop's call. I haven't had time to ask about the details of the accident. 
that had to wait as nothing was more important than Eva. At the same time, another tragedy was unfolding. The Constantines rushed all the way to the crime scene. They couldn't believe their daughter was dead, but when they saw their daughter's corpse lying on the street, both of them almost passed out. However, what they couldn't accept even more was why Lucy died. We looked into her transaction record. She withdrew a huge sum of money a couple of days ago. We suspect that this is linked to her death. You have to find the murderer. I don't care how much it costs. Give her the justice she deserves, Cornelius said. Tearfully, it's a shame. She could have gotten married to Louis and helped the family immensely, but now she's dead. The marriage is annulled. It was a double whammy for the Constantines. Fiona was on her knees, crying her heart out. My girl, why, why did you leave us? She almost passed out. Eva was nearly dead when she was sent to the hospital. Fortunately, the doctors worked their best, and her heart was finally beating as normal. A sliver of color had returned to her otherwise pallid face. The operation was a success. The moment the doctors emerged from the emergency room, someone hurried up to them. How did it go, doctor? The operation is a success. She's stable, but we'll have to keep her under observation in the ward. Louis heaved a sigh of relief as he felt a weight lifted off his shoulder. Eva was everything to him. It would be devastating if the woman he had loved for so long were to die. Thank God she's still alive. A while later, someone pushed Eva out of the emergency room. Her forehead was covered in layers of bandages. And she was wearing blue hospital scrubs. Louis thought she looked fragile, it was as if she could break into a thousand pieces at any moment. It made his heart ache. He followed the nurse to the ward, then he carried her and placed her on the bed himself. He let the nurses set up the IV infusion and machines before he approached her. Louis held her hand softly, and he kissed her palm. Sarah was shedding tears. She said, I'll leave her to you, sir. This accident requires my attention. Something tells me there's more to it than it seems. Go. Louis nodded. Sarah left. All that could be heard in the ward were the beeps of the machines. In the silence, tears welled up in Louis's eyes. He wished it was him, not Eva who had to endure this. Chapter 1759 Fury Meanwhile, fury and sorrow enveloped the Constantines. They were helping the cops out with the case. Officer. You must arrest the murderer. My daughter deserves justice. I know. We're looking into it as best as we can. Besides the death of Lucy, Cornelius was also worried about something else. The terms of the arranged marriage clearly stated it would be void should either party were to pass away. Sarah was also helping with the investigation of Eva's car crash. She was going through the footage of the accident. Eva was driving carefully in the footage and did not break any traffic laws, but then a black off-road vehicle sped up and crashed into her car. Eva's car spun two times before it came to a halt. The mere sight of it almost made Sarah's heart stop. Why did he do that? He could have killed Eva. What did Eva ever do to him? We're looking into Eva's network, and we need your help. Do you know this man? The man was dressed in black and wearing a mask. All Sarah managed to see were his eyes and nothing else. She took a closer look and shook her head. I have never seen him before, and Eva won't even get near anyone shady. She tries to live a quiet life, and I'm the one handling the business side of things. Does she have a boyfriend? Yes. Our boss, Mr. Louis Gilmore. He loves her deeply. I see. We'll need his testimonial as well. All right. I'll tell him about it. He'll be here as soon as possible. Another officer came in. He told the questioning officer, Lucy's death has something to do with this guy as well. Lucy. As in Lucy Constantine. What happened to her? Sarah asked out of curiosity. She and Eva talked about Lucy. Once, and she wanted to know what happened. Lucy Constantine was murdered earlier. Three in the afternoon. What? That's, that's unbelievable. Sarah was shocked. Lucy is Mr. Gilmore's fiancé, but now she's dead. Sarah hurried to the hospital right after she left the police station. Eva was still unconscious. Sarah told Louis he had to make the police station trip the next day, and she also told him about Lucy's death. A frown creased Louis's forehead. 
Are you sure it's her? The cops told me it's her. I don't think they were lying. Didn't anyone tell you, sir? The Constantines haven't, no. Louis shook his head. Why haven't they told me anything? Are they suspecting? Something. And why did Lucy die all of a sudden? They say she was murdered. Sarah spoke with fear in her voice. Did someone take their revenge on her? I'm not sure. I'll have to wait for the Constantines to contact me. Louis wouldn't look into this himself. Cornelius was having his testimonial taken at the police station. The cop asked, did Miss Constantine contact anyone lately? Has your family been at odds with anyone lately? That reminded Cornelius of a certain person, and fury welled up within him. Yes, he's my daughter's fiancé. It's an arranged marriage, but he refuses to go through with it because he fell for another woman. I think he's the one who murdered my daughter. What's his name? And his job? Louis Gilmore, the president of stardom. I've signed a contract with his parents regarding the arranged marriage. Where the terms state that should he not go through with the marriage, he must give 20% of his company's shares to me. It's a huge sum of money. I have reason to believe he killed my daughter. Even Cornelius talked himself into believing this line of reasoning. Louis powerful enough. He can do anything for that woman. I see. We shall be interrogating him. The cop held a photo up. Do you know this person, then? Chapter 1760 Woken Up No, we went through your daughter's call history. The last two calls she made were directed to this person. His name is Zach Lore. He's a drifter and an ex-convict. My daughter would never get involved with someone like him. The cops recorded his testimonial and told the Constantines to go home and wait for the news. Julian and Jesse came to the hospital right after they received Louis's call. They too were worried about Eva, who was still unconscious and pale as a ghost. Tears welled up in Jesse's eyes. Did you find out who did this? Julian was furious. Louis went through a lot for this relationship. Just when he finally got to date Eva, she got into this accident. The cops are still investigating. Their suspect is a masked man, Sarah answered. Just then, Louis's phone rang. He quickly picked it up. Who's this? Louis Gilmore, we're the cops. We suspect that you're involved in a murder and we'll need you to come to the police station in 30 minutes. Is this about Lucy Constantine? If you leave her, there's a bunch of men who will try to get her. Truth behind common myths about men, get ready to be surprised. Yes, I'll be there right away. I expected this. The Constantines do have reason to suspect me. Julian, you and Jesse, stay here. Call me when Eva wakes up. I need to deal with something. Is Lucy really dead? Julian asked, worried. And the Constantines think Louis did it. I need to be at the police station. Louis nodded. Louis was in an interrogation room. Unlike most people, he was calm and collected. Mr. Gilmore, we're looking into the case of Lucy Constantine's murder. Her family said there's a conflict of interest. Between you and them, did you murder her? No. I've never gotten that idea. Sources told us you refuse to go through with the arranged marriage because you have a girlfriend. Is your girlfriend Eva Duncan? Yes, Louis answered all the questions honestly, though it didn't help his case. He still was the prime suspect, and he was prohibited from traveling abroad. Eva was starting to stir, at long last. She opened her eyes only for the light overhead to blind her, causing her to groan. Where am I? The hospital, Eva, you got into a car crash, remember? Jesse said softly. A movie so bad it's not just watchable, it's enjoyable. It's not cheap, a standard surgery can cost as little as 5,500. Eva closed her eyes. The memory of that car crash still made her head split. She had to hold Jesse's hand just to overcome her fear of that accident. When she opened her eyes again, she saw everyone who was in the ward. But. He wasn't there. Why isn't he here? She was a little disappointed. Eva, Mr. Gilmore watched over you the whole afternoon. He has something urgent to settle, but he'll be back. Soon. What's the business? Lucy Constantine's murder, Sarah answered. What? Eva almost sat up from the shock. She's dead. Who killed her? Eva felt as if her head just exploded. The cops are still looking into it. 
Mr. Gilmore is having his testimonial recorded, but we know he's innocent. Don't worry, Sarah answered honestly. Eva was someone who'd rather hear the hurtful truth than be lied to. Eva looked at Julian. Julian said, don't worry. I know Louis. He wouldn't risk his future for this, not when he's planning on spending his whole life with you. Eva clutched her chest, and Sarah asked the doctor to check on her. The doctor immediately obliged. Nothing too serious, but we need to observe her to see if the concussion has any lasting impact. A short while later, Louis strode into the ward. To his delight, he found Eva already awake. Oh, you're awake. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos.